I can explain it to like pretty much every fighter, melee fighter. Okay. And uh, I know I try to pick pick up Jace Cannon. Okay. And, like I have a lot of game, but I'm <laughs> still trash, you know. Okay, okay, okay. The, the melee can you link me your OPGG? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna check it out and see what yeah. I can get from that. I have to OPG. Let me send you. Thank you. All right, let me have a look. Number one, okay, pretty good. So basically, the main problem is you know mm -hmm. when you tend to play too much Jax Fiora, mm -hmm. then I play Jace and I think I'm fucking Thanos in really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. In really range, you know. Yeah, and then I it makes play, sense. Yeah. I tend to play way too fast when I can like just farm it and play on my spike, you know. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's no problem. Yeah, um, played. Specifically, would you want like to focus on Jace or would you want to, um, like, would you want to focus on Jace specifically to get better at him specifically? Or, um, because the thing is, it can get difficult if we do multiple champions at the same time, but I can try. Mm -hmm. It's just, uh, it's easier to focus on one champion and then if we have time left, we can approach Kennen. But, uh, I think, I think it's the best to like approach Jace. I feel okay. like in gameplay, it's like both are really similar, you know? I agree. Uh, I think that. Um, the hardest difference is like the way you play like mid to late game. It's very different the way you approach the game. Yeah. But I agree that like laning phase and the general idea is very similar. So the first thing is, um, for me personally, the first thing I ask myself is, um, what's a good Jace game? Yeah, that's true. So I'm gonna screen. I'm gonna screen share because I'm writing down some of these things. Uh, let me just make sure I'm screen sharing to you. Uh um. Here we go. So uh, I'm going to write down some of these things, but the, the first question I ask is this, is like, or like, what's a good Jace player? Like, what makes a good Jace game? You know, like fundamentally is like, what makes me think like, I ask these questions to determine for myself, like, at where do I want to start my decisions? And what kind of runes do I want to take? What kind of build do I want to go? Uh, another question I like asking is like, what's a strong Jace? Right? Like what makes me go like, wow, when Jace does this, this champion is OP. Right? These are the type of questions that I uh, generally like asking. So what do you think? Uh, I mean, what's a good game? Jace? Okay. A good Jace? Okay, I will get it. What's a good Jace game look like, huh? Yeah, so I like, when, what makes you go like, when you play Jace, what's like, oh, damn, I just played a really good game. There are certain things. So I'll give you examples to make it easier to understand. But like, for example, I look at your Master Trees, like, if you do 50,000 damage in a game, that's a good Jace game, right? Jace is damage carry. He needs to do a lot of damage. So, uh, so one example is high damage. A high DPM yeah. is, for high me, damage. important for Jace to achieve. Because if Jace doesn't do high damage, then what does Jace do? Yeah. Nothing. Pretty much <laughs> <way>. <laughs> so the first thing is high damage, right? High damage, most, most reps, high DPM. Like win lane. Okay, win lane. Not always true, but generally you have to win well, lane. Well, that's the thing. This is why I have to define this right now, right? Because if you think winning lane is a part of a good Jace game, you're going to change your runes, you're going to change your build, you're going to change these things accordingly. So that's why I'm asking you personally. For me, I don't think Jace needs to win lane. However, if you think so, that will change the way you view the champion and it will change the approach you take and the risks you take in lane. That's why I want you to think about it because that way you can control your own game. Okay, so the number one thing I want you to get out of this coaching is um, you need to control your own game. Okay, what does that yeah, mean? Man. That means that you take risks when they're on your terms and you avoid risks when you don't know whether it's a good idea or not. And um, when you're playing a champion like Jace, yeah, in my experience, I would say Jace as a champion does not need to win lane to have these high damage numbers, high DPM numbers. What he needs is gold. Okay? Oh, yeah. Makes sense. Big gold. So way. what is big yeah. gold, you know? I agree. Big gold means 11 CS per minute and tower plates, maybe. And the point is, is do you have to, like, is, is you being 10 or 11 CS per minute and the opponent being 9 or 10 CS per minute and you having 2 or 3 plates... Is that considered winning lane? Not usually, but it's yeah, good enough, yeah. right? So the point is, is I'm I'm trying to get into the nitty gritty to determine what you want to start thinking about when you're coming into game, right? Mm -hmm. The next thing that I that I want you to think about is uh, which matchups, and this is because you have some experience playing Jace, right? So um, 
you have 30 games here on this account. You have uh, seven games here, so you have about 40 games, which is quite a bit. Uh, the next thing is um, your expectations going into a matchup, right? So you've played Jace about 40 times. You've been, you've been, you know, high low for a really long time. You have a very good grasp of Jace, right? Um, what matchups do I win? What matchups do I lose? What matchups can I start winning? Okay, so these are three different questions. Um, mm -hmm. So we've determined that for a good Jace game, you want high damage, in other words, high DPM, and you want money. The next thing is, in what matchups can I do this? The reason why we have to ask this question is because draft is a really big part of League. If someone blinds Malphite and you pick Jace into him, then maybe you can't yeah. achieve this, right? Maybe this is going to be really hard. It's possible, but it's very hard. So the thing yeah. is... Looks weird. You want to know what you want to pick your champion into, right? Or, if you blind pick, you want to know what can, when can I start winning. So Jace is the type of champion where Jace can actually start winning every matchup in the game. Once he gets a gank, once he gets a kill, once he gets uh, an experience advantage, uh, item advantage. Like, one longsword can be the difference between Jace just straight up solo killing you and, and, and just harassing every living hell out of you, or nothing happening. Because Jace is that type of champion where um, he can really start stat checking people. Yeah, the vault's going to be saved. All right. Yeah, um, to say it, it makes sense, you know, because I feel like when I play like Fiora or Jax, I make it like very easy. What do you mean by I that? Play too much. You make like, it very easy I don't as in how? Think about it. Exactly. I don't have to yeah. Think about it to like think. Mm, okay. Yeah. This is a good Fiora game. This is a good Jax game. So you what know? you did was instead like, of, of actively thinking. Just like, yeah. So what a lot of league players do is exactly that. It's like they subconsciously play so many games that subconsciously they they answer these questions. <laughs> because when you're playing and, you know, you probably have like what? Like maybe 10,000 Fiora games, maybe even more, uh, maybe less. But the point is you have so many Fiora games that you answer these questions by playing. So through experience, you figured out when you can win, when you're going to lose, and when you can start winning. You recognize that in the moment now because you've played so many. What I'm trying to do is circumvent spending all that time feeling it and start thinking it. Does that make sense? Yeah. That way you can get into the right mindset coming out of base because this is the next step, right? So the first step is, is when you come into game, what runes do I take? Let me, let me yeah. open runes here, right? So the first thing you do is what runes do I take? Actually, let's go to, for example, Lololytics. Let's open websites like Games of Legends, right? These websites we use to determine uh, what is popular currently and what is winning on Jace. And I'm not saying that you have to copy these. You just want to get the inspiration, right? So I want to make a clear difference here in um, why you're asking these questions. Because they in immediately influence your runes, build, yeah, I and then game plan, you. right? So before we start, it's important to think about this, okay? And I'm not asking you to give me a list of these things. I just want you to uh, have the habit of asking these questions um, until you know them by heart, like you do with your main champions, right? Like when you play Jax and you load into a, a Gragas, for example, I get the feeling that you don't just FF, you know? You, you, you play a lot of Jax, you will know yeah. how to create an advantage uh, in this matchup. And it might not always be possible if the opponent plays well, but you have the right idea of how to crack open a champion like Gragas, right? In the same yeah, thing, if you get really good at Jace, maybe you can start finding ways to crack open a champion like Malphite, right? Let me just close this real quick. Um, I mean, like you said, I think it's just about like getting the good, the right mindset. And like, if I can do this job like consistently, I think I can like finally not become trash on this champion and having like a 50% win rate at least in solo queue. Very good. That's where it starts, solo queue. It's the same game, okay? You're playing League of Legends in solo queue and on stage. A good Jace game in solo queue is the same on stage. That's something that a lot of people tend to forget. Now, uh, what I like to do is uh, I like to look up really strong um, specific champion players. So for me, for example, that's Zeus, right? That's the first the first guy I think of right now when I think of Jace. I immediately will start looking yeah. at what Zeus is doing. I will look at his build and I will see if what he does makes sense, right? So the first thing I notice is he's actually quite flexible. He plays Conqueror. And, and there's an uh, electrocute game here, which I like. I do like that he's flexible, but um, mostly what I see is Conqueror. Uh, in terms of build, from what I can see, he's flexible as well. He's, he's had one one or two Gore Drinker games, otherwise it was just Eclipse. But yeah, generally speaking, I would say uh, he's a phase rush games, he has Conqueror games. 
he has an execute game. In other words, he, he defaults into Conqueror, and then if he feels like there's a specific scenario or matchup where he wants to have a different rune setup, he pivots, right? So let's check the win rates in solo queue. This is, again, just something that I like to do just to make sure things make sense, right? So uh, in this case, the difference between Gore Drinker and Eclipse is 1.5% win rate. Like, this is negligible, you know? It's like, whatever. Like, I personally think Eclipse is better. Um, again, if you want to buy Gore Drinker, like, I... Yeah, sure. I don't think this matters too much. I don't think it's like a game, like a game breaking difference, you know? Um, right. So you check builds, same thing here. Like, yeah, there's a 2% difference and definitely Eclipse seems to be performing better in solo queue. But my point is like, I'm not going to nitpick this because, um, ultimately that's up to you. Uh, I know there's a lot of Jace players that really prefer Gore Drinker. I recommend going Eclipse, but, um, we're talking about gameplay and decision-making mostly. And then we're checking this, right? We're going to see like what actually wins on Jace. So, uh, you see, Conqueror is his most taken rune and has 2% less win rate than another very popular rune in First Strike, right? So, I'm not saying you need to play First Strike. I'm just saying, like, Jace is one of the champions that can take already three to four different keystones from the start of the game. That will change your approach as how, the, how you want to play the champion. So, keep that in mind, right? Um, don't pigeonhole yourself into uh, playing Conqueror Jace every single game. Um... The Keystones definitely changes playstyle, and maybe you want to approach uh, a matchup with a different... It, it just helps you solve matchups, basically, knowing that you can change things up. Right. Very good. Again, I would say his core build is Eclipse into Manamune into um, Cyrildas for top lane. Uh, I do think uh, there's, a, um, there's a niche case with Powerless Claw. Uh, Jace can cancel his Q. I don't know if you know this. Uh, I'm going to try and YouTube yeah, it to I see if I can the, find the it. Jace Fowler's Claw. Claw. You cancel. Um, awesome. This absolute beast of a beast of a Jace player has this. Um, I'm showing it for the stream here. Um, but there's um. That looks cool. I mean, it is giga broken. If you know how to do it consistently, it's broken. So what happens yeah. is he hides in this prowler animation. He hides his Q. So you see his Q. Uh, it, he has his uh, auto CDR, but the 200 damage you see here is his Q. So Jace can hide his Q animation in Prowlers. He's trying to do it right, but... Um, Jace as a champion has this capability. This is one of the reasons why Prowlers Jace can be really good in my opinion. If you can't do this consistently, I don't recommend it. But you saw it here. This was his Q animation. Uh, I'm going to replay again. I'm going to slow it down actually. Why not? Where is it here? Can I slow it down? I can, yeah. Dutch is hard to read sometimes. All right, so I'll just slow it down for everyone in chat just to show it one more time. I'm not going to spend too much time over it, but uh, he prowlers claws here, he auto attacks, and then he can Q. You see the circle? This is his Q going off. So this is actually really, really, like, it can be really high burst and a lot of people won't expect it. Um, also, prowlers Jace isn't that popular, so if you can pull this off, like right now you can E as well immediately, straight away. So uh, you can pretty much just animation cancel a very important part of Jace's kit and like one shot people this way. The next thing I like to go into is a VOD. So let's just do that because again, I think it's just important. Uh, again, I usually have a good idea of who I want to watch. So I just look up Zeus Jace uh, solo queue. Um, any game will do, okay? It doesn't matter if it's FF15, any game, you'll be able to tell the decision he wants to make. And then if you feel like, oh, early game was like really scuffed or like something happened that I don't like, like I don't think I'm learning anything here, then you can pivot out. If you want a specific matchup, you do the same thing, right? So for example, I learned that when Zeus was playing, um, Zeus was playing Jace versus Gwen, uh, he skilled E level one. So I don't know if you knew this, but last year um, it became uh, it became a thing to skill E level one against yeah. Gwen because he was doing it, as you can see. So what he would do is he would contest really hard level one. Um, with auto attacks and pushing the lane, and then he would, if Gwen ease into him, he would just pop acceleration gate, and he would just kite her, and he, she would take so much free damage from him just auto attacking her down with with attack speed runes that it would just became a thing. As you can see, exactly like this. So this play pattern became popular because he started doing it, and you see the difference in in play, right? Obviously, his spacing is really good, and he's a fantastic player. But my point is, is uh, Q can never re achieve this result in lane. Uh, in this specific matchup. So that requires some knowledge, but if you struggle with matchups or you're like, oh damn, this is like a competitive matchup everyone picks, but for some reason I can't find, seem to have that much success playing it, uh, 
looking up really good players playing the matchup can help you change your perspective. So let's just roll the clip a little bit here just to see um, what he's doing, right? So not only do we immediately check the runes, right? So he's playing Phase Rush Domination. This is an older game, so maybe let's go to the newer game because uh, runes obviously change over time. Um, but it, like already here from this eight month old game, you can learn something really, really important about Jace play, right? Is uh, skilling E level one and kiting melee champions that want to go all in like, like that on you, like Gwen, for example. Uh, maybe you're playing against a Riven that's trying to all in you level one. You can do the exact same thing. Uh, a lot of champions where you can have this adaptation where you skill E level one against melee picks and you can still squeeze out a lot. Uh, another thing to note is like he's really trying to maintain, like he's trying to equalize push against Gwen. Uh, he's not letting her slow push away uh, as much as possible. So uh, I want to just see how he reacts to Gwen trading with him because that's also really important about matchups, right? Trying to see how he reacts. Another thing to note, um, and I'm going to be giving you a lot of information here as I review this VOD because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about what I see on the screen and I'm talking about what I know. Um, Jace, um, EQing at level 2 is not really worth it. Yeah, too much mana for low damage. Exactly. That. It's a way better to like just wait. Uh, exactly. Waiting to level three and getting your second point. Exactly. So something yeah. to note is uh, Jace, at least in the past especially, Jace used to be the type of champion where if you use too many skills, uh, the opponent would start being able to attack your mana pool. Um, so keep in mind that if you're using mana, you're gaining some sort of damage on your opponent because especially in tank matchups like Scion, Malphite, uh, any Doran Shield matchup really, uh, that's just how Doran Shield is. Um, you need to be really mindful that you don't spend too much mana. So, uh, important to know. As soon as he hit level 3, he skilled Q and he went for it. And you see that he only walks up to Gwen when he has the Acceleration Gate. Now, Gwen was a little bit antsy there, but, you know, um, still. Well, oh. sure, why not? I'm actually uh, very yeah, surprised he decided to die. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's just say Gwen played that well, and oh, sorry, Vi played that well, and he ended up dying to a gank, right? So let's see how he recovers the lane, because, um, well, if he does, I don't know, but uh, it's important to note. Uh, again, in these VODs, honestly, I prefer watching VODs of people that uh, have a bad early game, um, because it's more interesting to see what they're going to do when they're behind. So, he actually blind EQs the Gwen there, just something to note. Maybe you can also do this, right? When you have a tier, it doesn't matter that you shoot one EQ like this. Might as well shoot one EQ and, and, and potentially cancel someone's recall, right? Actually yeah. pretty smart. I think it made the difference. So, very good, very solid. Doesn't ward. Uh, I, I would recommend warding here if you're in this situation. Cap. Mm -hmm. um, if you're in this situation, I would recommend warding here. Um, the reason being is like if you ward here and walk into the lane bush and then take the lane bushes before the enemy top laner has base TP'd, um, you're going to have a certain safe space from the enemy jungler, okay? Because right now he secured zero safe space. Vi could be waiting here, Vi could be waiting here, Vi could be waiting here. He has no space where he can uh, honestly comfortably lane. Um, he has no flash as well. He lost the level one, which is why all this crap happened. Okay, I, I missed that part. Um, so let's see. Let's see how he plays the matchup. Um, one thing to note, he, he's playing in hammer stance. Um, so, uh, you know, not every Jace player will be in hammer stance here as they see us every creep, right? So something to think about. Why is he in hammer stance? In this case, I believe he's in the hammer stance because he knows that he can just hard trade with her. Uh, doesn't yeah. eat her away because she doesn't have cooldowns, so he just absolutely murders her with a, a full range combo and then backs off. Really that simple. So that was a really nice little combo. Like I feel like a lot of Jace players would automatically default to eing her away there. Instead, he goes, he opts into a way harder trade with hammer stance into range form. Um, I mean, also the Q on this yes was clean, right? Because of the Gwen W. He's very clean, yes. <laughs> One thing to note, if you watch these type of players, you will realize they are very good. Uh, quick little mechanic here, uh, Jace can input buffer and auto attack after Eing. So he does auto, E, and he squeezes in another auto attack with his W. Um, so I don't know, are you aware of this mechanic? Yeah. Very good. Um, just again, just goes to show you, um, when, when a champion dies in these type of vaults, it's really good to analyze why they die, right? Like, how does the damage register? And uh, I'm not saying this, this this little trick will be useful every single time, but it can be. Right? Really nice sidestep. And, um, you know, pretty much the way the lane was set up here. Um, one thing to note here, and this is something that Bin used to do, actually. Um, I remember Selfmade pointing this out to me, but... Um, actually, it's not exactly how Bin used to do it. So, uh, well, so what Bin used to do here is he would keep fighting me, but he would kite down, and he would ward as he's fighting me. So he'd pick a fight like here, and then he would ward as he's fighting me, and I would call, he doesn't have a ward. But he put it whilst I was fighting. 
Um, <laughs> so, so it was really smart, you know, like obviously here it doesn't notice, but like I, I was so busy talking about what Jace was doing that I actually didn't notice that he went down to put a ward, right? Now it, it is pretty obvious if you're paying attention, but my point is um, mm -hmm. when I used to play against Bin, like he used to do, like, he would pick a fight with me right here. And then he would ward as as I'm fighting him, and it would be much harder to track his ward because obviously, like his character wouldn't be walking in a weird place. Like he wouldn't be walking all the way down to the river to go ward. He would just be playing. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and that was just something to think about, right? So, just to go back and recap here, how did Gwen die? How did the situation, like how did this whole situation play out? Um, it really looks like he prioritizes his hammer stance cooldowns when he plays against Gwen. So when he has hammer stance cooldowns, he's going to look to proactively trade and harass her. And when he doesn't, he's going to back up, right? That's that's what it looks like. He's waiting out for Gwen to make a mistake if he doesn't have his hammer cooldowns. That's what it looks like. So whenever Gwen goes on him, he goes, he answers her, right? He's playing reactive. He doesn't initially start the fight. Uh, rarely looks for any auto attacks. Like, he never auto attacks her first, basically, right? If you go back and check, the only time he opened with auto attacks was level 1. He never walked up to Gwen and started auto-attacking her. He only waited until the cooldown was used, and then he starts hitting her. So Q gets used to CS, he walks up to try and harass her. Really that simple. He hasn't walked up proactively to harass her a single time, right? And I want you to uh, take note of that, because there's a big difference in these matchups, right? So what matchups can I proactively walk up and auto you? And what matchups do I need to wait for you to use a skill or give me an opening to harass you, right? An opening can be, uh, do I EQ you? Do I hammer stance Q you? Uh, that is obviously determined by the, the nature of the matchup, but uh, note mentally, you need to be aware that um, Jace has two different types of matchups. Matchups where, like I mentioned, he can walk up and auto attack you, and matchups where he needs to wait for you to use your skill to hit you. So, for example, um, a matchup where Jace can walk up and hit you uh, would be uh, Kennen, right? I mean, to be fair with you, most Jace matchups will go from. I can walk up and auto you to, I can't, I need to wait for you to use a spell. That's just how he's been balanced. Um, so, uh, I would say, just be really aware of what level it starts to turn around, right? Of like, I can just walk up and hit you in range form and mm -hmm. prioritize hitting you. And what levels do I have to wait for you to use a skill? Um, it's really important that you know that because you're going to set yourself for, you're going to set yourself up for success knowing already in the lane, like I'm proactively baiting his skills or like I'm waiting for him to use a skill by slow pushing a wave. Etc. Um, now, when you have the slow push, it's much easier, right? Because at some point, if you're a ranged champion and you're looking for EQs as Jace, the opponent is going to have to use his skills to CS, right? Because he's yeah. just he's spacing in a way where, like, if the enemy walks into him to CS, he will hit him, right? So let's go back here one more time just to see that difference. Especially for Gwen, because obviously she has the stacks. But even if this is a Jax, right, the way he's trading can be very similar, right? It can be very, very similar. Um, yeah. Obviously, you would have to stay in hammer stance and then eat him away when he when he jumps on you. But you get my point is the idea can be similar and it can be for any champion. Like in this case, it's Gwen. I'm telling you, if Malphite does this, you will beat Malphite. If Sion does this, you will beat Sion, etc. Right. So keep that in mind. And then same thing here, right? If you're playing versus Sion, you're going to have to play the same way. Sion has Q, Gwen has Q. You can't just walk up and auto them, right? You're going to have to wait until they use their skill and then you respond. How you respond will depend on the particular situation and obviously how the how the game plays out, how the matchup is playing out. Um, and the champion specifics are really important here. But I think I'm clear in, in letting you know. So this is when he plays, how he has the slow push. And before we close the VOD here, because um, the next thing I want to know is how does he play when the wave bounces back to him? Because the thing is, so the thing about League of Legends is uh, correct gameplay usually doesn't care about gold advantages. So what I'm saying is, is if he plays correctly, whether he has this extra longsword from this kill or not, often it will still be the right thing to do. Because you dealing 100 more damage in your combo, is that going to change your matchup? so drastically that it changes the way you perceive the matchup? I don't think so. Okay, so a lot of people, for example, they mention the the, the the health rune or the armor rune or whatever, right? My mindset is, this. you know how much damage reduction this gives you? Armor or armor? Roughly? Uh, I actually don't know. Uh, but I usually take uh, HP as well. Uh, I know it's better, like level 5. No, I, I'm, I'm, I don't, like, that's not my point. My point is, is, it gives you about six or seven percent damage. Like I don't even like. It's like, I think over a course of a laning phase, it'll give you about, I think, maybe a hundred health, right? And my point is, is if you're playing in a matchup where a hundred health makes the difference in the outcome of the lane. Oh, okay. This is what you. 
you want to say? Are you really playing the most consistent game that you can? If a hundred health makes the difference out of the 900 you have with potions, health regen, etc, etc, right? Like, because most champions start at around, like, what, 550? Let's say you have, together with potions, you have, like, 800 health, right? You combine that with, you know, uh, leveling up, giving you some some extra... Let's say you have 1,000 health, levels 1 to 3. Is a tenth of that number so valuable that if you know a consistent way how to play the lane, that this makes or breaks your lane? Think about it. If the answer is yes, click this or this. <laughs> if the answer is no, click this. And that's all I wanted to bring up. I'm not trying to judge you for either way. It's just uh, something to think about because you need to be mentally aware of the decisions you make, okay? Because if you're mentally aware of the decisions you make, you can change them. If you're not aware of what you're doing and why you're doing it, it's hard to change and it's hard to find ways to uh, adapt your gameplay. And that's when you can sometimes feel like you hit a wall. Mm. Right? Yeah. What does he do when the slow push is coming to him? I mean, it makes sense. I will be like more aware next time because I was like kind of going like for HP, like kind of autopilot, you know? I was sure. like, okay, this matchup, so much action before like level five. Okay, I'm going to take HP, you know? Yeah. What does he do with the wave here? Are you watching? Uh, are you watching the vault? I want you to tell me yeah. what what is his approach? What what is he thinking? What is he doing? What is his champion telling me? Well, I think he wants to like deny Gwen recall because I know Gwen has a huge wave and he's gonna try okay. to slow push the next wave and get a recall. That is so think, you assuming what he's trying to do. What is he actually doing? Oh, he's trimming the wave. Exactly, he's trimming the wave. How is he trimming the wave? Right, he's auto attacking the wave as much as possible. He's yeah. keeping space from her. As much as possible. So he's hitting every single creep without letting her get in range of hitting him. Now it's it's obviously Gwen Jace is really really micro intensive in my opinion. Like I think this is one of the hardest matchups in the game um, for Jace uh, in the sense of like to execute this matchup really well. You need to be really fucking good at Jace IMO. Like you need to be insane. But like see, see what I, like this type of trade is like wow you know like the spacing this guy has is ridiculous. He plays so well in my opinion uh, in terms of spacing. Uh, hammer cues, his range form spacing, like everything is like, honestly, top, top, top notch. Just trying to show you what his mindset is, okay? You don't have to be as clean. You can you can have less HP than he does. You can get poked more. But the point is, is he never wants to let Gwen have the slow push on him. He really tries to trim the wave. Same thing level one, right? We go back to level one. He was doing the exact yeah. same thing. He was auto attacking the wave constantly or auto attacking her. His auto attack was always on cooldown, basically, right? Always hitting something. Like, look at him press S to get the absolute maximum out of out of hitting her, and then goes to the CS instead of hitting her again. But the point is, you know, just really, really impressive spacing coming out from Zeus. I think this is one of the main reasons why you should watch him play champions like Jace, Nar, etc. His spacing is insane. I think he's probably the best from what I've seen, okay? Uh, obviously, I wouldn't... Uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't watch that many Chinese uh, solo queue vaults, so I can't say for sure. But uh, from what I've seen, Zeus is probably the best Jace player when it comes to straight-up spacing, in my opinion. Someone said in chat, spacing is a matter of talent. You can't just copy him by watching him. Oh, yes, you can. It will take a lot of practice and you'll have to literally take a VOD and you will have to slow down your VOD 0.25 speed and look at your right clicks. But you will learn if you do this. If you are committed to looking at your right clicks, you will. I'll tell you a little story, okay? Um, it's, uh, it's important for you as well, Jithin. The reason why Hilly is so fucking good at support is not just because he's really good mechanically, because he would go into a vault, right? And he would, I kid you not, he did the same thing with me and I thought it was hilarious because I love that shit. He opened a vault, right? Uh, I don't have any POV vaults of myself, um, but he opened a POV vault uh, of me and he literally looked at the clicks and I clicked once backwards when he was going all in and he asked me, you're clicking back this one time, are you hesitating? And it sounds funny, but if you think about it, he's right. Sometimes the difference is one click. And the point is, is that one click helped me understand like, oh, damn, yeah. Like, I actually wasn't sure if I was going to win this fight, so I hesitated for a second, right? Uh, I stepped backwards for one second. Just something important to note. Um, Going into the VOD and checking your clicks can really help you define what is going on in your mental state. 
because someone that will want to leave won't just click once backwards, right? He's going to cl click his champion backwards all the time. He's going to he's going to click forward and then click back back. Forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, right? He's going to try to leave the fight. Um, someone that's clicking forward, forward, forward wants to go in and fight to the death, right? And, and, and that's not always a matter of a winning or losing fight. That can be a mindset thing. Um, and I think aligning yourself uh, with your teammates by reviewing the vault and going in that, that's really, really, really valuable. Um, and yeah, I'm not saying like, go open your jungler's vaults in solo queue and be like, why did you click backwards <laughs> in this 2v2? I'm just saying, um, for yourself, right? Not? Judge the fight. Why not? I think you might get banned. <laughs> I don't think Ryan would appreciate that. Anyway, this vault is pretty much done. We, we, we got what we want out of it. Uh, the next thing is like, um, I'm pretty sure you're aware of all the Jace combos, but uh, just mm -hmm. for the stream and just to show people like what the general idea is, the next thing I would do is go and practice tool. And I practice the relevant combos. Um, so for yourself as well, if you want to hop into a quick practice tool real quick, just to get warmed up, uh, you don't have to do this. You know, again, I don't do it before solo queue. I always used to do it on stage. Um, I always used to play Aatrox and Jace. When it's on stage, you know, it's 10 minutes where you sit on stage and like, um, the analyst desk is oinking or talking about X, Y, Z. Um, this is what I would do. Almost every time without fail. Wait, why am I pinging? All right. Wait, did my master's DC? What happened? Okay, there we are. All right. And that was it. I, if I could do this properly, I knew I was good on the day. Oh wait, I click kill champion. Right. Dying, anyway, that is not good. But when you start to like miss the gate and all of those stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like just a nice clean Jace. Jace combo. All right, we're good. I can play. Good. You know, and I would just test all these small combo. Even if I had net, like, even if I wasn't gonna play Jace, if I combo well, I'm happy. All right, so. Uh, for Jay specifically, I want to go over some of the basic combos. Um, obviously, number one, QE. Auto W. Uh, auto W and then R, right? Just just having the habit of doing that. And then whether you queue in or not, you can still judge. But uh, just something to keep in mind. Um, I think that's basically it. Uh, one neat little trick that Jace has now that you can buy so much CDR again. Uh, wait, how do I TP? I actually forgot yeah, the, the command. Double Q yeah, he can do double Q yeah, again. No, so this I is can't. something this is something that he he lost. They nerfed it about him, but it came back with the ability haste cap, and we haven't really seen anyone do it. Um, I'm gonna have to ignore. You can you can reach this cap with uh, transcendence and CDR shoes. Uh, you don't actually need to. 100 ability haste is the cap. I'm gonna have to buy uh, like a, I'm gonna have to buy some weird CDR items here to, just to prove the point. But you hit this cap at about 98 100 ability haste. But what you do is you Q and then you walk up with it and then you acceleration gate. Wait, let me just turn this off. So what your Q is, you walk up with it, then your acceleration gate, and then before your acceleration gate is gone, you can just snipe another Q through it. Uh, and this works even if you have a, a little less CDR. Uh, if you have boots, um, works as well. All right. Next up, E auto works. Very common, uh, commonly known by now. Another one that works, um, which is especially potent when you have the uh, extra auto, is you can um, auto Q. So you can hide your, your auto attack animation completely when you have the thingy. You can do it as well, I believe, if you don't have your passive. But I just know it works extra well when you have the passive. For some reason, the animation just goes way smoother. Uh, I don't know why it is the case. I actually don't know. I, I never do it when you don't have the passive. Uh, it's It doesn't hide the auto attack. You have to wait until the auto goes. But when you have the R passive, it hides it completely. You can literally just input buffer the auto and just go. I mean, if I do it properly, you'll see. I have the passive, you walk up, it literally, like, you don't even, the auto attack doesn't even register. You've, you've queued the guy and you hit him with a basic attack. So, something to note that Jace is capable of. Um, it's why, uh, also when he gets CC'd, so when you're in hammer form and you get CC'd, for some reason, his passive auto and hammer is broken. Like, broken as in really OP. I don't know why, but you get CC'd by someone and you input buffer the hammer auto with this passive, it will go through. So if someone right now, like I get cocooned by Elise and she's next to me and I put in an input auto attack command, I will auto her. If you're a repost, I get stunned, she's next to me, I will auto her. I don't know why, for some reason his hammer stance auto is just OP. So keep that in mind when you swap forms and you're queuing someone when that's on top of you. If you can squeeze in this auto, it just, it can make a big difference, okay? Awesome. You still with me? Yeah. Do hammer I'm Q and control four? Uh, I'm listening because uh, that's a lot of information. Oh, I, I didn't know Actually, that. The, the votes one. I'm not ready to combo with the votes one. 
Wow, that looks like a really scuffed, actually. <laughs> okay, apparently you can hammer Q and control 4. Um, another one that I wanted to know, another thing, and this is very basic, but it actually makes a difference, is when you E someone off of you, okay? Uh, now, I have Serildas, so it's not as relevant, but when you E someone off of you, you'll notice QEing, Qing first before you E will um, be much more effective. So if Darius, for example, in this matchup, it's really important, because the difference between QEing and just Eing him can be the difference between him still catching up and apprehending you. So like matchups like Jax, for example, he's on top of you with E and he hasn't used Q yet. You want to Q and then E because the slow will help you get away. So obviously you Q, E and you just insta start running. And then when he's trying to catch up, he's still slow. Make sense? Hmm. So make sure when someone's on top of you, you don't just panic R E unless you're going to get one shot. Then, well, you're probably dead anyway. But my point is if you're trading and you're not going to instantly die to the trade, always try to hammer Q first. And if you can get the auto, great, but don't... Obviously, don't go for that unless you're winning the fight. Because uh, if you get the auto, that's gonna like it's gonna lose you time. This is again, someone's on top of you. You need to get away. Slow him first, then run. Is the E distance longer if you queue first? It shouldn't be. Uh, no, I, I, it shouldn't be. It's just the slow will make a difference. And obviously, if you're playing Eclipse, for example, uh, proccing your movement speed proc can be relevant too. All right. So again, perfect trade. Someone's on top of me. EQ, auto, auto, I hammer stance, he's on top of me, I auto, I failed the auto combo there. Um, so we'll run it back. Perfect combo would be, I do in range form, W, auto Q, I failed my input again. Okay, we're gonna keep practicing. It's harder on a dummy because they don't come to you, so like, when they're melee range, it's much easier to get this auto off, but basically, auto Q and then E him, right? Again, you wanna, you wanna get smooth enough that you hide this auto attack completely, like this, and then you run. So, that's kind of the mindset, you Q, E, W, Hide your ult attack completely, and then E, boom. You just, fuck, this guy's literally wondering, like, what happened to my health bar? Like, wh how can Jace do this much damage in so little time? You know, like, <laughs> yeah, he, he really doesn't even know. You got in, and especially if you get this extra auto win, right? Like, if you get really good, you do auto W, you hammer form. Uh, I didn't even cancel the Q, but, like, you auto cancel into a Q there, into E, and you hit this guy seven times. Like, you, seven instances of damage, right? Range form, EQ, one. Auto W, 2, 3, R, Auto Q, sorry, it's 6, <laughs> Auto Q, 4, 5, E, 6. So you hit this guy 6 times in like, what, a second and a half? This is what makes Jace, Jace like Jace, right? Being able to do this. Another thing I want to talk about since we're in the game right now. Um, let's refresh the game. Jace power spikes at level 7, 9, and 11. Why does Jace power spikes at these points? Because that's when he puts his big points in Q. Okay, what I mean by big points is... Um, at level 7 is when Shark Blast starts to hurt. It's also when you have Serrated Dirk, usually. Uh, so at level 7, it starts to hurt. Yep. At level 9, it starts to really hurt. At level 11 is when it does maximum damage. So when you're roaming or you're thinking about making a proactive move and you're level 8, I like to double think about it. It's like, do, would I, like is this a fight I want to be level 9 for? You know, like, is this a fight that's going to be really impactful? Because uh, getting points in Hammer Q is... Oh, in, in hammer and range form, it's just really relevant. You see, 50 damage, 55 damage. You're getting 105 damage just by hitting level either 7. Wait, let me just double check. Yeah, okay. Uh, I was just checking if it goes up per, per level or not. It doesn't. It's 50 flat at level 3, at level 5, at level 7, at level 9, and level 11. So it's important to just think about that because... Um, you know, when you make a big roam or you're about to, like, there's a dragon up, sometimes what I'll actually think about is like, I want to get level 11 ASAP because getting this extra point in my queue will make my poke that much more impactful, right? All right. Very good. So yeah, this is the bread and butter, I would say. You just run at the guy. Q auto E and then that's it. This will one shot the majority of champions, you know, if you're good in the game. Um, and if you can't one shot them, you just hammer stance, walk with them and then E them, right? Very simple stuff. Again, I, I recommend you practice it because uh, using his attack speed can be a bit hard, but you do want to be able to um, input your, your, your commands well enough that you can walk with him as you're hitting him with the uh, attack speed, right? You want to walk behind him, um, especially at phase rush, because maybe you can knock him back, you can put him in a worse position, etc, etc. Now, the one thing that I can't really go over with you that's really important about Jace is how his E interacts with dashes. Um, oh. If you E someone at the start of his dash, it will always knock them back where where it should should in the sense of it will knock them back yeah, to the point where, where he initially started dashing yeah. it's going to knock him back to where the game thought he should have been so uh jacks 
uh, actually Jax's dash is a bit weird, uh, but it can work that way. Uh, Orn is a great example. So it works with Fiora Q, so I got surprised many yes. times. <laughs> Fiora Qs, she gets E'd, she'll get put all the way here. So Fiora can Q into you, get behind you, and then if the E got input and registered as she's queuing into you, she will fly from behind you all the way back here or back here. So um, just a thing to note, uh, it's relevant for Orin as well, because you can wait until his E is halfway through the animation and then E him, and it's actually going to knock him all the way back. So uh, in that matchup, that can be super relevant. Uh, that's the matchup where I think it's the, the matchup, like Orin versus Jace is the matchup where I remember it being the most relevant, because you can force that situation. Nar is another example. Uh, you get on top of Nar with hammer stands. You can kind of wait for him to hop, and then you can E him, and then you'll put him in the in the same place regardless of when he starts his E. So think about that. Like I said, when you're playing Jace, these are small things that matter. These auto attacks are the difference, okay? The difference between how much damage he's doing in fights are these auto attacks he's weaving in. I'm just going to show you, uh, to give you an example here, I'm going to try and find some examples uh, within the game. Uh, late game usually, like early game, it's not as relevant, but especially late game is when it's really relevant where you see these auto attacks come in, right? Again, I'm slowing this down because this is what you want to do. I want to slow down and see, is he doing it? You see? You saw it, right? Do I have to go back one more time? He auto-attacked, right? I'm just saying, like, auto-E. It was Q, auto-E. It wasn't just Q-E. It was Q, auto-E. And uh, you'll notice that, like, when people run into him, he'll auto-W first, and then he'll go hammer stance. Um, if you need the damage, go for it. If you don't need the damage, don't. But um, that's something that experience will have to tell you. All I'm saying is, like, think about that. It's, for example, again... You know, what did he do? He did Q, Auto, W. He always animation cancels. And this is how Gwen's health bar is lower than it would be for the average Jace players because he weaves in all these little autos, all these little points of damage. It all is relevant. It matters. All right. It is Jace specific. Um, well, not just Jace. Nidalee is another example of a champion. I think shapeshifting champions in general can generally weave in a lot of autos in between spells, which is what makes them hard. Um, you know, the best Nidalee players with W auto Q or W auto E, uh, they'll W E auto Q. They, they'll weave in an auto. Obviously, you can't always do it. And sometimes just using your Q is the best way. But in those situations where it matters, the best shapeshifters, uh, you know, shapeshifters as in champions that don't have an actual ultimate, they have a shapeshifting R. Uh, they almost exclusively animation cancel. They're on the tower. He got in an extra auto attack. What I'm saying is, I can go through this VOD, and, and you'll see it. I can go through the next VOD, which is what we'll do next, um, just to, you know, refresh. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go into game, all right? So, actually, before we do that, let's decide on what runes we want to use and, and general build and game approach. But let's uh, finish off appreciating him not using Acceleration Gate to farm that way, because why not? Uh, and let's watch one more fight where he fights Gwen here, um, just to see how just to see how he does it, right? And uh, I like fast forwarding, so if, you, if you're a bit uh, itsy, like, if you, if you don't want to, like, spend the whole vault watching, I like to just fast forward, fast forward, fast forward, and, oh, he died. All right, let's go back. How the hell did he die? What happened here? Let's investigate. All right. Got Tala W'd and murdered. <laughs> well, not much to learn there. Bye, press star. A little neat trick here that he uses, like, he waits, he presses S in fog. I, I try to do this sometimes, too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he waits in fog a little bit to try and get a better angle, and then uh, just runs her down. Wait, can you go back? Uh, I want to see uh, how the attacks go. Okay. Before he I believe like he auto before he flashed in, or something like this. Let's have a look. Like the animation was a bit weird. He did... Oh, he auto the creep, I think. I, th I think he auto the creep for CS. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the cannon? Oh, no, actually, he, he, he auto queued her. Oh, you're right. Yeah, he autoed her right now. Uh, yeah, he input buffered his auto attack before flashing. This is just a really good habit. Uh, I'm sure you know this, but if you do auto flash, your auto attack will always hit the target. Mm. Uh, yeah. If you do flash auto, they can flash it and cancel your auto. But if you do auto flash, your auto attack will register no matter what. Uh, so that's a nice little habit. And look at the awareness, you know, just to appreciate. Like, he's hesitating here, not because he doesn't know. I was like, why did he hesitate? And then I realized, oh shit, he doesn't know where Vi is. Gets Vi queued in the face, but... The point is, he was thinking about it. Like, the right thing to do is actually hover up here, uh, because he's a pink here. Um, but yeah. The fact that he hesitated shows that he was thinking about Vi, which is really impressive, in my opinion. Often, when you try to get those free kills, you sometimes forget something. someone can collapse on you. Anyway, I really want to show one... Like, he died twice in a row, so I didn't get that... that juicy Jace combo. And like, on a tower, of course, you're going to do it. On Gromp, like, just practice it, you know? Like, you're hitting Gromp, 
do the optimal damage rotation. If you're hitting the tower, do the optimal damage rotation. Why not? It costs you nothing. Get a little bit of practice in whilst you're, whilst you're playing the game. Keep your hands warm, etc., etc. Um, so one thing to note, again, any top laner that runs tier 2 to tier 2, he's looking for money, right? <laughs> this guy has just been running around taking money on the map. That's all he's been doing, right? He's not particularly, like, he's only grouping when it's good for him. He doesn't, he doesn't make any proactive moves to group just yet. Obviously, now it was good for him. He, they grouped then the game. It looks like they opened. But, um, you know, just a really good example. You know, I know the enemy Gwen is griefing, but you get the point, right? He, In between every single spell he used, except for the first, he auto-attacked, right? Auto. He did Q, Hammer, Auto, E. Range form, Auto, Q, E. Uh, auto, W, and then Q, E, sorry. Um, basically, he got an auto attack into every single thing, and trust me, if he didn't do that, he wouldn't have one shot her, like one shot. You know, he wouldn't have bursted her nearly as hard. Um, and that's what you're looking for. Again, it's just a good habit. Uh, same thing on the creeps. He does auto QE. Uh, again, we can go over this. I'm sure you get it by now, but uh, mostly for the people in chat. Really, this is the difference. Okay, this is why Zeus is killing people on Jason. You're not. He is weaving in these auto attacks consistently over and over. You notice how he actually doesn't skill his spell um, yeah. in these matchups. Um, because if Renekton skills E, you're going to want to skill E as well, right? When, when a champion like Renekton, Gwen, skills a, a dash against you, uh, that's when you want to do that. One thing I really respect is Jace players don't ward here right now. Um, because in matchups like Renekton, he has the slow push, which is what he's, what he's playing for, and he will try to hit him as, as often as possible. Again, really nice spacing. Um, takes the bush, holds the bush because he's a level up. But again, doesn't play overly aggressive. He knows that his health pool is really valuable in this matchup. Because the thing about Renekton is, how does Renekton win? How I does Renekton win this matchup? Plus W and just kills you, right? So well, waits for his jungler. Yes, game. basically, yes, yes, exactly. He ch chips away your HP until you're low enough for a flash W to one shot you, right? Either one v one or with jungle. Either way, that's the only way he wins. So he really values his health, and he never hammer stances in. You notice he's not hammer stancing in ever. He doesn't need to. He's got the wave slow pushed. He's fine. He's not proactively looking for a hammer stance at all. He's preserving his health, just right-clicking, just harassing, playing very patiently. Uh, doesn't want to put himself in a position where he gets low and then gets pressured. He's really waiting out until Renekton is low enough that a hammer stance combo will put him out of commission, if that makes sense, right? Yeah. So one of this, yes, that little creep there. I think if he, if he collapsed a little earlier, that would have been better, but... Um, Really prioritizes the XP, which is super surprising to me. I mean, uh, I think if he immediately ran, that would have been a guaranteed kill, but uh, Nidalee played really well, so it was a kill anyway. Obviously, like, small decision-making, uh, like, moments there where it's like, his habit is to go for the wave there. My habit would be like, fuck the wave, I'm going to help. Uh, that's just the way it is. And then the next thing about this matchup is when Renekton does E into you, you unleash hell. You do not, under any circumstance, hold back anything. You use everything and you just crush his skull, you know, like, literally every ability possible. So a little thing to note here is, um... You notice how he doesn't auto here? He just walks with him because he knows he's going to R, auto Q, and that's going to be a kill. Um, if he doesn't flash. Now he gets his flash. Uh, Echo is dead. Echo is out of the picture. And immediately, he's fine with completely sending it and trading extremely hard. But also, you notice how his HP is really low and his HP is really high. This is also another reason why hard trade is completely acceptable. Right? So just another thing to know. Um, I personally would have been happy with the chunk here, but he opts into baiting Renekton to come into him and trade even harder. Like, Renekton not Wing me there, I would have just been happy with it. But he says, fuck that, I'm going to take a slosh or kill him. Uh, kind of only respect it, right? Um, let's see how he capitalizes on this. Let's see. Uh, I'm interested in seeing how he capitalizes, because his cooldown's going to come back up. Uh, I believe they're a little shorter than Renekton. Uh, also, his W is on, on a longer CD than normal, because he used it last in the trade. Keeping track of this stuff, like Renekton used W last in the trade, which means my cooldowns will come up before his W. So even if he has E the same time I have E, if he doesn't have W, who cares? So this is why I didn't like the hard trade too much, because it's like, I feel like Renekton just wins. I mean, I'm not sure why Renekton isn't just killing him. To be fair. Renekton must not have fly. Oh yeah, he used it. I'm stupid. <laughs> Never mind, okay. Uh, I, I lost track because I was explaining things. But yeah, since Renekton doesn't have flash, uh, this is again, like, honestly, this is just some immaculate spacing. Um, just really well done. I do think if Renekton input buffer W here, he's just dead. I don't think yeah, he should Q here. Just, he was, should just W. I'm pretty sure Jace just dies. W. Yeah. <laughs> yes, PT as well. Like, this guy just dies. I think he's like, this is like a bit of protest because Nidalee has the river and Nidalee is not killing him when he has no flash. So it's like top lane protest, you know what I mean? Like, sometimes it's like... Yeah. You do a little bit of protesting, you know? It's like, I'm going to keep fighting this guy until you come and kill him. And if I die if I die trying, it's your fault. 
you know, like, fuck it, like, not my problem. Prioritizes tier every game, um, chooses not to TP, again, I like this, you know, when, when someone do chooses not to TP, it just it helps the brain juice flow, you know, it's like, oh, he doesn't TP here, he values his TP more than this cannon uh, that he would probably have gotten if he TP, right? Yeah, he thinks that his TP is more valuable, let's see why, right? Let's try and analyze why that is. All right. And let's see how the matchup changes here. Let's have a look, actually. Because, again, this is what I do. I fast forward. I see a lot of HP disappear. Oh, how the hell did that happen? Let me see. Auto attack, auto attack. Again, he's just waiting for that E. He E's, steps into the bush, EQs him in the face, right? So notice how he steps out of the bush to hit, goes in the bush, steps out of the bush, goes in the bush, cannot get W'd here. So even if Renekton had W here, he can't W him, right? He's in the bush. Now, if he has a ward, he can, but point is, we can appreciate the way he plays it, right? Optimal. And the timing at which he uses Hammer Q is, again, something I think we all want to appreciate here. He doesn't Hammer Q here. He doesn't Hammer Q in a burst combo, right? He, he just starts auto-attacking. Auto, auto. The way he's moving his character is towards his tower, right? Could you repeat that? He got, he got max value on the Conqueror. AD stacking on the Q spell. Not just that, but he kept his gap closer for Renekton's Q, E2, right? I think that's yeah, the I mean, real important part. E2, Q. So I'm gonna ask I mean, me. I don't think about all those things, you know, when I play against you, Jace, and then next game I must face fucking Jace on this, just on Jace, you know? Yeah, but the point is, is so, so a lot of people, so a lot of people, um, you know, like, they remember, like, when I had good performances at Worlds, etc. Like, or, like, I was acceptable, you know? I don't think I was particularly a good performer at Worlds, like, insane or anything, but I usually held my own in lane, and this is why, because I would base myself off these standards, right? This is the standard I set myself to. Right? I watch this guy play Jace, I look at why he's autoing, how he's autoing, and as Renekton, like, if I'm reviewing this as Renekton side, I can play a way better Renekton Jace matchup than this guy can, um, from watching Zeus play the Jace side. Um, and that's fine, you know, like, maybe this was me, like, two years ago, you know, like, I don't know, like, the point is, watching someone really good play, and watching someone really good punish a matchup, helps you understand how to play the opposite side as well. So, yeah. um... This is why, like, you know, if I go back to World Championships um, that I played, I generally was always okay. You know, like, when it came to laning in, in, in general, like, Season 8, like, same thing, you know? Like, I can go through the match, uh, not, not 2021, let's go 20, 2018, right? Like, I played against some really good players, and generally speaking, I would say, I mean, let's go look at the statistics, right? Like, nothing spectacular, but I was, I held my own, right? And, and that's all that matters, except for that one game, which we don't talk about. <laughs> but yeah. Um, since 2018, it's because I based myself off this, right? As a rookie, I based myself off this, and three years later, when I was playing uh, 2020 Worlds, same thing. I based myself off the VODs of the best players in the world playing these champions, and that's what you want to do. This translates the stage, okay? Uh, you know, just for the people yeah. that don't know. Um, I mean, it's just obvious, right? If you do it in, like, solo queue, you will do it on stage. Exactly. You should practice. So, again, less, you know, less good, but still, like, I wouldn't say a top lane game is determined by being down 5 CS, 300 gold, and 250 CS. Again, that's my perspective. Uh, this is me playing tanks, by the way. Okay, I'm playing Orn, Orn, Malphite, Orn. Um, if you're Orn, Malphite type champion, Gangplank, if these champions are on average this little behind, you're having a very good game. Okay? We can agree with that. Yeah. Very good. Awesome. Like, look at my look at the champions I played, man. I was I was such a degenerate, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Malphite, singed, orn, volley bear, like, set. Volley bear, sing it. Dude, I'm I'm actually a little psycho. What the fuck? <laughs> I like I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. Anyway, um, the point is, I just wanted to bring that up because I want you to give the contact. I want you if you if you base your Jace play on this, uh, you it will translate. Okay, it will translate to every single person that you play against in your league. It will translate to the people you play against at Worlds. It will always translate. Um, optimal gameplay is optimal gameplay, whether you like it or not. Yep. That's just the way it is. Like, always, like, this is the ironclad rule. If you play the matchup optimally, it will always translate. Very good. Let's try and get into a game, and um, we're going to do some, some live action work. Damn, that's the moment where I just completely run it. Yeah, I don't mind. Feel free. I, I really don't mind. Um, like I said, what I'm going to judge is not, like, 
as we're in queue, I'm gonna bring this. I don't know how how long are your queues? Are they Insta or? Yeah, I just got in Insta queue. Okay, so the uh, so first thing is like, uh, I wanted to address runes and build, uh, but I would generally speak and say Conqueror is a good place to start. Um, it's it's not. I don't think it's his optimal rune in every game, but I think it's never a bad rune because of the tenacity option. You have uh, last stand, presence of mind is always solid, and then you secondary take this. I do think some games first strike or mm -hmm. phrase rush can outperform it. Um, especially i think the electrocute option can work but i haven't explored it much personally I'm, I'm a big fan of first strike personally i think a lot of matchups where you get a, if you can get through eclipse without having lost the game having this it's almost always the best one in the game for him because mm -hmm. that's when he's going to start farming a lot of gold with it but uh again let's recap what we talked about uh i'm going to write them down so i so i can have this for you so um i'm going to leave the questions here um, runes and build, I'm going to leave that for you for a game plan. Um, whoa, what the hell did I just type? Uh, for a game plan, I would say, um, levels one to three. Uh, so first four waves, I would say first four waves. Um, first four waves, first question I would ask, can I walk up an auto? Can I start trades or do I react? Does that change with um you know level mm -hmm. spikes or item spikes I, I'm, I'm i'm gonna put these questions because i can't give you the answer for every single matchup but the reason i'm mentioning this is because um this is what you want to be thinking right and this is what you want to know this is the knowledge that's going to carry over game to game okay so the first time you play ken versus jace and you full hammer stance into him and you send it with uh two long swords at level six and he ults you and he just mercs you you know he just owns you <laughs> and you're like what the fuck i thought this was a winning matchup you might realize i can only start doing that when i have merc treads or you might realize i can only start doing that when i have serrated dirk the point is that's what you want to figure out as you play or watch other players play okay yeah but this is the questions you ask to get to that answer right am i the guy attacking or am i the guy defending am i the guy proactively looking to hit him or am i letting him hit me and then i hit him back harder or equally hard or less hard but i still have to hit him back because if i don't i'm just gonna get, you know get rolled over right so that's what you want to ask and that's why sometimes like not hitting the guy back at all is actually not bad either because sometimes you can just not hit back and be fine because your goal is to just catch that wave and recall and the more you extend the trade the worse it is so i actually got lucky i think my jazz game is not that bad i know awesome all right i mean i'm but let's see it doesn't look too bad tomorrow all right awesome uh i'm just gonna ask for chat do you guys want game sounds when i okay so i'm gonna this? explain i'd like to explain what i do as well so of course yeah go for it uh so we play against Jax. i mean i'm not sure if i'm maybe bone plating can be a big deal in first level so i'm not so sure like in this matchup i saw just killing up w and just autoing okay like we did with his E as well, but I want to okay. try to decide. Okay, I mean, uh, go for it. I, I, I think uh, if you have a if you have an idea that works for you, I'm I'm always open minded. Uh, yes, I mean, it's the first no time sounds. I'm gonna yes, do yes. it in game, right? So now I saw it, but I didn't practice it. <laughs> so oh, it's okay. It's don't worry about it. Bad. No, but don't worry fun. about it. Don't worry about it. Just play your best game. So the first thing I, I will say is like I I'm not a fan of your setup. Um, I personally don't like it too much, but I, I I'm not gonna like I don't really care. It, like. The, whether you have boot, free boots and cookies or bone plating, like, I don't give a shit. You know, it doesn't make a difference. I mean, usually I play it with free boots and cookies, but I just want to try this side and I want to sure. try bone plating in case I int it level one, you know. I don't want to, I don't, I don't want my game to be over level one just because I. Sure thing. Kadrol only. Well, there you have it. Phaser is just the way to go versus Jax. You don't need it. Like I mentioned, if you queue E Jax, you can always stop him from queuing on top of you again. If you melee queue and then E him. So this is really important in the Jax matchup, because there's a matchup where if you just E him, he can catch up and Q you. But if you Q no. E, he will never, ever, ever, unless he flashes, right? And then you react. But the point is, is he will almost never be able to touch you. So um, in terms of backseating, like I'm not, I think, you know, you're a high low player. I'm just going to let you play your game and I'm going to, you know, be talking to child. I'm just going to mute, let you play your game. Obviously I'm listening. So if you want to ask questions, I'm going to unmute and mm -hmm. answer them. But for the most part, I want you to do your best, you know, just play your own game as if you're playing yourself. I know it's going to be a little different, but you are used to streaming. So yeah. just play your best game and uh, we'll discuss the decisions after the game. Cause I want you to really focus on what you're doing. Okay. That way I can get the best data. All right, thank you.
All right. I'm gonna mute for now and talk chat a little bit, and uh, we'll see. I'll uh, I'll still be here listening. All right. Snipe Pedro XDD. <laughs> that's cute. Ten ping. Oh yeah, that's pop jump. You definitely need tenacity against that team. Yeah, I agree. I would take tenacity too, but I think alacrity is like acceptable. Um, I think in general Imagine it's just if acceptable. I don't use w guys, level one. If you don't do what W? Yeah, because this is what I want to try. But imagine I just fucking use ultimate without using W. Oh, <laughs> that would be awkward. I'm, I'm interested in what you mean by this W strat. I'm, I'm actually curious. Um, uh, in case he starts Q, then I just kill up W. Um, and you just melee fight him to the death? In your wave? Um, okay. Yeah, that's the plan. Okay. I, I mean, honestly, I respect it. If, if, if your plan is to do that with bone plating, then I can respect that 100%. Uh, I think if you have no bone plating, you'd lose probably, but with bone plating, I, I can definitely see you having a lot of advantage. Uh, again, not a line I would take if I was Jax. I would never start Q in Jace matchup. I would always start E, but uh, if he does so, I'm curious to see how it plays out. Let's see. Yeah, I think so too. But I'm not back in Europe. Uh, no, I am, I'm in LA. So it's... I, I want to try that. Because curious. I saw it and I, I, I'm curious. About yeah, sure. It. Go for it. Let's see. Uh, I'm, I'm still in uh, NA. I'm... Um... It's 2 a.m. here. So yeah, frame rate might not be the best, but that's part of Discord screen sharing. Can you make it full screen? Sure. Hey, Razor, thanks for the sub, man. I appreciate that. Let me thank some subs real quick. Go Mac, Time Corp, Beast Dude. Thank you for subscribing. I appreciate that. Doesn't bone plating give Jax another timing to play around? I don't know what you mean. Like, it's either you have it or you don't. So either you have an extra layer of defense or you don't, right? Okay, the plan right? is doomed, guys. Yeah, he doesn't really? like that's the that, I, I would say as Jax, you probably just eat shit for the first three levels and then you start like I think after six is when he proactively can start pushing to try and queue on you, but even then it's kinda hard. This matchup is kinda hoping Jace makes mistakes, I think. But uh just play your game, you oh know? Like, God, do your thing. Things. It's it's all good, it's all good. Again, missing CS and stuff, like I I don't care about that. Like Oh my god. What a what a sinful gank. Unbelievable. He was looking for that? Oh my, I can't believe oh it. God. I can't believe he was looking for that gank. That was so dirty. Was he level 2 there? I feel like he was level 2, no? Like, am I crazy? Oh, he was level 3. So this isn't could be improved. Uh. The first time we can ask here is like... First question is asking, is basing for a tier better here? You know... I come to the conclusion, oh. yes. It's all good. And this is going to happen a lot when I coach people like on stream. Obviously, they're going to like talk about their own mistakes and point them out because I do that too by the way when you stream it's like this is the moment where I, I wish I had cookies it's okay it's not a big deal we'll, we'll talk about this don't worry it's good that you recognize that though so the first thing I want to notice is um he was three oh there you go the first thing I want to talk about is um and this is what I mean with control right so the first moment you had control here really well played actually I actually really like how he spaced that it was really well, impressive cookies. He's no mana, so you can't punish him. Because normally this like this looks losing, but if he has mana right now, he would just absolutely fish jacks. Actually, his spacing is really good. Honestly, he played that really well. That was really well played. I love the spacing on that. Alright, so... Um, he made the most out of a very losing situation. Um, I actually think his situation was really bad. Had Jax just taken the hard trade and left left it, he would have been really good. That was nice. This guy is really good mechanically. So he's a Fiora player. Uh, he's a Fiora main, and he's actually, I think, in my opinion, one of the best Fioras on the server. Um, so his mechanics are really good. I mean, in general, you can tell, right? Like his spacing and patience is, is, is really telling that he's comfortable playing carry champions versus carry champions. Um, something you love to see. I mean, really well played again. He's gonna murder Jax here. Pave the way. Okay, I, I see what he was trying to do. I see what he was going for. He wanted to flash to see if he could set himself up for a solo kill. I like it. Yes, Jeetan is playing. My hands are not on the keyboard. Could be getting Lang Gang by Lee. Oh, we see Lee now. Okay. All good. So Jax has no TP. Are we going to blow up the wave? Are we going to freeze? Let's see. Time to make a st 
I agree, just walking into the bush with Diana hovering makes a lot of sense here. It's very Q. All good. The wave is bouncing now, though. Obviously, I think we could have managed that better. We can use the timing to ward. Makes sense. Need a ward there, too. Can be scary here, getting queued in the face by Lee. I think if Lee was a bit... Okay, I'm, I don't want to say it, but I think if Lee was a bit more aware, he definitely should have stepped out of the bush as well. In that moment. like He should pick a time where he just walks out of the bush randomly. Because he knows Jace is going to ward the try as well, right? Like, Jace 100% needs a ward in try, so he's going to, at some point, walk into the try. And you can't know when he's going to do it, but I think the right decision is still to start walking out of the bush at a random given time and just investigate, you know? Uh, I actually think if Poppy... Never mind. Poppy's wave is terrible. So we're calling for a dive top here, and actually, I mean, I'm sure, yeah. I mean, I think Diana's pretty terrible at it, but I think, ultimately, this Jax is going to die if uh, he stays under tower and thingy comes, and the execution is not terrible, that is. Uh, just the way that we, we managed the wave was not optimal for a dive, I would say. So again, need to be a little careful here. Okay, this can be very, very, very deadly. Honestly, it's going to be a bomb plating diff, I think. Oh, it's ignite diff, actually. If you had, <laughs> Funny enough, if, if, if they had no ignite, bomb plating would have just straight up tanked that shit. Dude, the bomb plating value. Lee's blind, he's just sensed it. I mean, I'm just saying, like, I'm just mentioning for you guys, if you're playing solo queue and stuff, like, when someone goes into fog and they ward river bush, and then ward try it, and you don't have vision on them, like, just pick a random time. Like, you can even count a couple of seconds if you want, but, like, pick a random time and just show up out of the bush, and you're probably gonna, like, this is like a deer in headlight situation, like, you're both gonna stare at each other, like, what the fuck? Um, and that's kind of the situation you want to recreate. That, that, that's all I'm saying. Like, I, I'm not saying that what, like, I'm not saying it will get him killed or, like, I just think it's a better angle. That's all. So actually, this Poppy Mid just absolutely smurfed this fight. I actually don't know what the hell it's, Poppy Mid is about, but Poppy Mid just ulted Lee Sin out of the Dragon Pit and then just, just fisting. I actually really like that he checked. Uh, like, right now, I would like him to double check again, but him thinking about uh, what Jungle is doing, pressing tab to check items, also very good habit, something you definitely want to keep doing. Lines up the wave to hit his shock blast on the whole wave. Well done. Uh, Jax roams and dies. Really good. Lissandra has no ult, so he feels very confident to walk past the tower. Also very good. I would ward the, the golem bush here ASAP, which I think he will. Uh, if Oh, he's just warding the lane. I prefer warding the golem bush here. I think that's more relevant vision personally, but... Um, again, also not terrible. Uh, often if you ward the golem bush in the middle here, you're going to spot someone. Okay, I like that he stands his ground and fights there a little bit and then realizes it's no longer it. Okay, a little bit of a... Uh, a little bit of, like, no different sure ideas there on how to play the fight. Yeah, I think this Herald can work, but only if the enemy team doesn't know. It can be a very sneaky and good Herald play if the enemy team is not aware, but, like, if Lee Sin does Raptors and hit 6 here and comes, it's, like, giga throw. Because Lissandra and Lee both will have ult, and we don't have Dan ult, and we don't have Poppy ult, and even if we did, obviously, Lissandra Lee is really strong 2v2. As she gets solo boloed by a fucking Poppy mid, um, sure. Yeah, why not? We have uh, Hillisang busting out of the top room here. I like how it's played. Uh, hugs Morgana, so the, the root is always going to come in here, and, uh, yeah, just rebuild. I, I think it's I mechanics so wise. I don't think so at all. I think you're playing solid. Don't worry about it. Uh, but just solid stuff, you know? Nothing... I mean, nothing crazy in, the, in that situation, but definitely just a solid game. So, actually, taking the full tower here gets his mythic, and I want to bring that up, because it's a decision I want you to think about, okay? Like, it's a decision uh, I want people to think about. I should get this way, maybe. See? Like, he wants to get the next wave because he wants... So the thing is, is like, if you're gonna get the next wave anyway, is heralding here and sharing all that gold with you and Diana not better? Something to think about. And I'm not saying that it is or that it isn't. It's the fact that you're thinking about it will lead you to a potential yes or no answer that will define your gameplay. Okay, okay, not too bad. First game of the day, but... Because uh, right now, when he opens his shop, he's gonna I have the clips. You think too much? I think you're playing really well. Keep it up. Don't worry about it. Like, I, I think you've played a really solid game so far. So the point is, is like... Just something to think about, right? Because, for, for example, for me, I would ask my jungler there, like, do you get Mythic if you get this tower? If she says yes, I would take the tower. 100% of times. I would just say, alright, let's just take it. 
Because Diana getting protobelt here on this base is actually really relevant for the game. Dragon is still up. Her having protobelt for Dragon is relevant. It, she's going to have her next ultimate up, so her second ult of the game is going to be up with protobelt. That's so much more deadly than not having protobelt, and it is relevant because it's Diana. Obviously, if that's a Maokai, do I care if he has Radiant Virtue or not? Maybe not. But with carry junglers like Evelyn, Diana, Echo, um, getting your protobelt a little bit earlier, or your Night Harvester through Gragas, like, it, it can make a big difference, and it's something to think about. Right. I like the lane ward here, just a random lane ward. Um... Can be the difference between getting lane ganked and murdered and not. The patient smart. Like, I like the fact that he's playing smart. I wouldn't be doing it because it's solo queue and I'd just be fist fighting with his jacks right now. But the fact that he's playing respectfully whilst we're doing Drake, <laughs> etc. is just really smart. Uh, really good play. Uh, I mean, honestly, he's, he's setting himself up for a double kill here, 2v1. Oh. <clears throat> uh, he wanted to go for the month. Like, he, he, okay. he knew. Exactly, yeah, it's for the content. Uh, he knew there was a double kill there and I, I saw it too, but he, he panicked a little bit, went a bit too early. Alright, still well played. Nice job. I go, we'll talk about that in the vault review again. Um, and that's just pressure, right? And that's like something that actually is relevant for him because he wants to go pro. And having the presence of mind there to realize, like, I don't have to go for this montage play. My flash is more valuable than the, you know, my two seconds of fame I get for 2v1 and making a big play. Like, what's better there is actually just to play really stable and not flash at all. Even if it means you get zero kills. No, no play. Still playing patiently, uh, Pedro hasn't shown himself ever anywhere else, so continues to respect Pedro. Uh, again, just really smart play. Our bot lane got double killed, but we're still heralding mid and he's not showing mid. Now he's showing mid, we're gonna play the game. Exactly. Immediately baits him. Really, really nice patience on his E. Like, honestly, playing really, really well with the with the Jace. Like, he says he sucks at Jace, but like, when I see this trade already, I'm like... That was a bad click. I, I'm, was I'm, I'm impressed, honestly. I mean, I agree. I think there was... It, it, had he fully committed and sent it after that hard trade, he would have won no matter what, but... Um, yeah, I mean, his mechanics are really good. A solid combo. It's a Kadril. Pedro is the name they use to... Uh, Twitch chat calls him Pedro. I actually don't know where it started, but I think it's funny. Alright. No, plays respectfully, but he's still hovering. He's, he's investigating, is what I call it. He's not sure if there's anything to be created, but he will try. A uh, little something I call investigating. Or sniffing if you want. Nipa, pretty much. I, will light our path. I thought he was already pro. Uh, he, he played an amateur uh, in L LFL the second division, I think, but it didn't really work out, uh, is what he told me. So... Technically, yay. All right. I mean, we, we have a rich Jace. That's very good. Get the last play five seconds before they fall off. Very nice. So one thing to note is uh, having Conqueror gimps your mobility. So if you get caught, you kind of stay caught. Wasn't this game Gore Drinker better? I think Gore, Gore Drinker is never better. So you're asking the wrong person. I think that item is just not as good as Eclipse's on Jace. I think it hurts his power curve. Um... You, you sacrifice early game power on a scaling champion, and then you also sacrifice scaling. Eclipse gives you more power early game because the components, if you ch I'll show you, because uh, there's a little bit of a... I'll show you after this game, actually. Uh, just to give you my... Like, also, I'll share it with him, just to give him my opinion on the item, and why I don't think Gore Drinker is good, because for the same price, you're buying components that are weaker, and the completed item scales worse. So why buy Gore Drinker? Gore Drinker's components are same AD, minus, you get plus an active button, like the, the whip active, minus armor pen, which is just, on a champion that builds armor penetration, not very good in my opinion. Don't you like Gore Drinker even against tanks? Nope. Percent penetration scaling on, on Eclipse is already really good, and if you have Eclipse, you will win anyway. 
Gordrin her completion doesn't change. So my point is, is when you have Eclipse okay, or when okay, you have Gordrinker, it doesn't change the fact that you still win. Now, if you buy Gordrinker when you're behind, you might win or go like barely win in a like fight to the death in spots where you would have Eclipse if you're behind. But my point is, is the issue lies in if I'm behind, not the itemization. Does that make sense? I think the issue lies in the fact that you're behind. That's what should be addressed first. And then if you want to say, if I'm behind, I'm going to pivot into Gordrinker. I think that's a different topic entirely. Like, it's a, that is okay. But to start building Gordrinker already, so like committing to it by, for example, buying Pickaxe or Iron Spike Whip before you've fallen behind or you're in a bad spot, that I disagree with. Personally. Okay, I really like that he pushes out Lee Sin, then goes back to his lane. He's really strong, so he just like one shot Jaxter, like one shot in the sense of like put him in one shot range, I should say. Like just like three hits and he's already gone home basically, right? Uh, nice aim. Not too shabby. He should be really careful here. I think he's being a bit too cocky. He can definitely be a target here for, for the enemy team if he's not careful. They're not looking at him though, they're looking mid. Okay, they are looking at him. So yeah, I don't like how cocky he was here personally, but we'll see. I like that he hammer cues first. Q flashes there. I'm not sure I like the way he played that. Uh, managed to get one, but that's going to be it. I think we could have played that better, but again, that's like a small thing, you know? It's like, ah, I'm pretty sure we could play that better, but at the end of the day, we'll take it. So here, Ninja Top by Art, great. Yes, However, I, I'm not sure I have to fly this guy. He's zero seven, right? I think, uh, I think the, mis like, the way you were taking the wave was far too aggressive. Um, I, yeah, think I think so. you didn't respect at all that they could just, after killing Diana, still be around and, and look for you. So uh, other than that, yeah. I think the way you played the fight was acceptable. Like, I think it was okay. Can you play better? For sure. But I don't think it was like egregious. I probably I can just. I mean, I can be safer, but I think I can wait. just one shot the listen if I play it good. So we want to be thinking like, do I want to TP the here, etc., etc. Like right now, had he like already mentally prepared himself to TP if he wanted to, that works. So the reason why I don't think Ninja Tabar are that good is I actually don't think you ever die unless you get caught by Lissandra or Rakan. Uh, if you get caught by Lee Sin kicking you, then I think you are just kind of trolling. Um, but yeah, again, as a moment where it's like, I just want you to think about it, you know, like, do I TP here, yes or no, and then commit to your decision. I like that he said no, and he's committing to his decision. I prefer that than him right there, TPing when Jax is killing Diana. I prefer him saying, I'm not TPing. If you die, it's your own problem. Uh, I genuinely do. I genuinely do. Now, if Diana, like, pings him on the way with TP and basically forces him to TP, that's a different story. But Diana was not pinging and being like, TP, 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 you know? Dude, Diana was just picking a fight. Like, him right now pressing tab and pinging TP to me is like, the fuck, you know? Uh, anyway, you know, Lissandra makes a nice pick here. We'll see if he can get away. Nice try. Got as much He got the most damage down possible. I like that. I will clarify, this is this was not free. Um yeah. Alright, let's just think about where we want to go on the map, right? So like what I want you to think about right now is like really yeah. identify how you can lose this game. Because you just died twice, uh the game is still in your hands, but we might be able to lose if we don't respect their mid jungle right now, right? Like Rakan and mid jungle. So let's look top right now. That could be an opportunity where we fight without Lissandra being there. That could be interesting. So that's always. It can help. Like, for example, there, if you ping Morgana that you want to TP, you can maybe get her to go behind them through Tri Brush, put a ward behind them, and then just TP. We pick a fight. 2v2, 2v3. Mm -hmm. We win right now. Maybe you can TP on, on, you know, like pinging for wards and stuff can always be actually really helpful like especially when you do it before the fight starts right so if you tell someone like i have tp can you ward here for me it can really help someone um make a better decision yeah makes sense all right solid stop you know this is how you play jace in these situations you don't hammer stance in you just do as much damage as you can in this case you got him a kill but sometimes it doesn't Looks for poke, good. You know, optimally, I think you aim for Zaya there and you wait a little bit, but... 
Point is, you short blast someone and run topside. That's like, you have a wave to catch. I think that's totally reasonable. You also push out Jax in case he's still in the area. Uh, so again, I'm just happy he did that. Base is here. I do think he should go for the next wave. I think it's a Jace specific thing, but he can pressure the tier two here. Uh, Lee Sin is dead and Lissandra can't 1v1 him. So right now, if he's like, with Jax being bought, if he just sends it on this wave right now, the map is in a state where the enemy team will collapse. Uh, it will be really hard for them to play the game. Like, Jax being bought right now is illegal and Lissandra showing mid was equally illegal. Like, basically they put themselves in a position where they got fucked. Like, on the map. Uh, it didn't happen. Uh, he didn't recognize it in the game, but it's something that I'll mention. Uh, him being here is not bad though. Like, so I want to clarify, like, the better play, in my opinion, was definitely to, to, to aim for the... Uh, definitely better aimed for the tier 2. But well, him grouping and trying to make a practice play is not bad, I think. Uh, even if the outcome is not good, I don't think the, the habit is bad at all. I don't think that's a, a bad thing to look for. I mean, honestly, this Poppy's kind of 1v9, I'm not gonna lie. He's fucking good at Poppy. Is it Popushka? Like, Popushka is the guy I remember. I don't know if there's anyone in you that would be as much of a psycho as he would be. To play Poppy mid. Oh. Is that Popushka, by the way? Who is this Poppy? He's kind of good, no? I have no oh. idea who this guy is, but yeah. Kinda He's kind of cracked, no? Yeah, actually. I mean, I didn't even notice I had Poppy mid, but... I mean, he, he's been like, kind of 1v9 Yeah. Hmm. You think that top can work? If you put in a lot of work and effort, yeah. It's not easy. It's pretty difficult. I don't really like him going bald, but... Yeah, just take over. You're a carry. If you're the carry and he's the tank, you tell him to fuck off. That's how it works. You need gold, he doesn't. It's my shit. Okay, we're looking for a practice little play here. Not too shabby, a little short blast. He's uh, gating behind, we have people hovering. Let's see if we can kill this guy. All right, pretty solid. I think we've set ourselves up for a kill here. That looks like a single dingle. Oh! I mean, I like it. That's so cool. Ah. I wouldn't have gone for it, but I like it. No fucking idea if I had to do it, but I, guys, that looked fucking cool. I think TPing early makes sense here. That ward, I wouldn't have TP'd on. I would have TP'd... Uh, actually, yeah, I probably wouldn't have TP'd there. If you got Black Shielded, it would have been fine, though. We're still fine. Poppy's buying all the space. Honestly, this Poppy's kind of fucking smurfing. That one with nine, holy shit. Holy fuck. Yeah, this guy is smurfing. If you cancelled that uh, Rakan thingy, he would have been insane. Yeah, I think we stop here, by the way. Ardana is not that strong, okay? She's no HP, no ult. Using yeah, pings to help your team understand the situation is really important, okay? So, like, pinging back, 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 back is really good here. Because you're not going to carry this fight. Never. I'm this dead. fight is really hard to carry for you. Uh, I mean, you're, yeah. you're not necessarily dead. Not yet. Now you're dead. <laughs> yeah, I'm fucking dead. But yeah, like, helping your team understand, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just ping, like, yeah, I'm not going to carry this fight, so unless you guys know something I don't, I don't want to fight this. Uh, this type of communication yeah, can be really, really like good. Just because I don't ping. That's okay. Again, we're here to learn, and it's just one game. Who cares about the outcome? As long as you can say you tried your best, which I think you are, I, I don't mind at all. You're playing well. Like, you played really well, and then you made a couple of mistakes, for sure, but it's okay. It's not a big deal. You said it was a pretty good Jace game. I'm going to disagree with you. I think playing against Rakan and Lissandra as Jace is not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... I'm not saying it's impossible, like I'm just saying. I mean, all of these, but yeah, too much engage, so. I mean, if it were competitive, maybe. I agree with you, but in a solo queue game, people are gonna fist fight oh. and you're gonna have to join. Either way, we can still win, so let's no. focus. I can't thought we would just have vision and I could play on range, but I'm just getting out engaged. You're gonna kinda bait it, yeah. Nice. Another freebie. Very nice. So versus Jax, you can play whatever rune you want, because the way that the matchup goes, you QE him when he goes on you. Um, Conqueror helps you punish him the hardest if he does make a mistake. However, I think this matchup is actually, like, I think you slowly gain advantages 1v1. So what rune you takes doesn't change that. Uh, I think Conqueror can help you, like, really drive it home I feel like when, when he makes a mistake. But I would say most of the time, uh, the rune is not relevant. 
So if we had kept better track of Zaya's old cooldown, we could have definitely chose to kill her there. Like we could have, we could have potentially killed her there for a track of her cooldowns. But I like that. If you don't know, don't assume that she doesn't have it. Assume she has it. So we back off. Just the right thing to do. Okay, well, yeah, Conqueror is stronger early, that's thing. what I mean. So you can really drive home the advantages. Like, well, if Jax makes a mistake, you can basically kill him, like, very, very easily. Um, but if he doesn't make mistakes, the rune scale is the worst. Because Sorcery Tree is better than Precision Tree for Jace, and you don't go into Sorcery Tree secondary when you go uh, Conqueror. You still go into Cookies. Or He went Bone Plating for, like, a specific level 1 thing. Um, in case Jax skills Q level 1, he wanted to uh, have Bone Plating and then fight him. But um, I think that's, like... That's tech, you know, like, tech is situational. So here he, he I actually like how he plays because um, he's the vulnerable member. Basically, if they go on Diana there, Diana's not going to die instantly. I think you got a Hamish Dancing on Jax there. If, I mean, maybe not actually, but he should start running. I feel just contesting mid power and enemy team just went through bot and sent it. So this is kind of, this is kind of what happens. I was sort of thinking back, it was a fine chunk, I think. It's okay, it's not a biggie. Uh, Jax DP'd and then they collapsed. This happens, you know, like, the game is not over. Like, the enemy team needs to base and defend, and we can see what we can do. Yeah. Like, the game is still being played, right? Like, in that, the outcome of that situation hasn't ended yet, until Aphilios backs off and you back off, right? But the thing is, is they need to base and defend, and now it's important not to get baited. Now is the scary part, because now enemy team is coming with better resources. Holy moly, Pedro's a ninja. Oh, Pedro is really sad right now. Ah, uh, yeah, I mean, you could have definitely like done like six, seven hundred more damage to him, but I don't think it would have changed the situation, unfortunately. He still got a slash. I wish I had gold to buy these. Sorry, I was checking my Discord. What did you want to... Stop what do you want to buy? Stopwatch? But I have no gold. It's gold okay, you can just buy pink. Just buy one pink. Don't have to buy two, just one pink. Leave it there, we'll see. Okay, next fight I pop it off. Ah, flash. Let's see. Mm-hmm. So, no one's going mid, so we go mid. The portal's still faster to mid, just a small thing. But you still want to take the portal if you're going to mid, because it's faster. Oh, okay. Our future will be bright. Mm -hmm. Right, so now if you want to reset lanes, like so if you if Aphelios catches next mid wave, you can just base and buy your stopwatch right now. This is not a bad timing to base. It doesn't really matter, like, you, you have nothing to... You can even drop your pink here if you want, like, for example, right? Like, you drop your pink here, defensively, like, just this ramp. Uh, I, I would do the, the ramp area here, but it's fine. It's, the point is, yeah, you buy another pink, and then you come out on the map again, like, you're just fresh, you know? Like, you have another pink, you put your pink down, it might make a difference, it might not, who knows? You buy a stopwatch, and now you're fresh to fight. Dana took over your job, so, you know, can feel bad, but in this case, whatever. Uh, just a good habit. Alright. Again, so even though the game went a bit into shit, like, I don't really care about this. There's a lot of material we can go over, and I'm really happy about that, specifically. Oh. I mean, that's the, the good part. I prefer Biggie Burger, to be honest. Biggie Burger? I, I, I'm, a, I'm a bigger fan. But I've never tried Biggie Rib. That shit was not a thing when I was in Belgium. Probably that much. Pedro's in the game, so it's go to tops. <laughs> yeah, I love how like I love the whole Pedro thing. I don't know. I think it's hilarious. I don't know where Pedro comes from, but it reminds me of the the thingy meme. You know the um, the actor is his name's Pedro, right? I don't know what his last name is, but the guy from the Mandalorian. That's where I know him from. Like, dude, I it reminds me of that meme, and it just it cracks me up. Pedro Pascal? There you go. That's the one. Yes. I don't know. I mean, I like him a lot. I think he looks like a, he seems like a really nice guy, and I think he's like, uh, like I'm a big fan of the Mandalorian, so like, just good vibes, you know. And then you have that uh, the Last of Us meme. That's just just funny. 
So again, good. Poke is good. Hard engage. I, I approve. I think Papushka could have been a little quicker, but we'll take it. We're cute in the face. Stopwatch it? I wouldn't have stopwatched it there, personally. I would have just played the game. Uh, what I mean by playing the game is, like, I would have just, like, used my spells, you know? I wouldn't have stopwatched there. Uh... Oh my god, that was such a bust of watching flush. <laughs> yeah, it panicked a bit, but it's fine. Basically, peeing here, if you don't feel confident that you can contribute to the fight, it's also not bad. Just as a side note. Wow, Morgana actually played that really well. Holy shit, you know it's a high level game when there's like seven stopwatches in one fight. <laughs> there's like... I think there's three stopwatches and a Zonyas or some shit. Like, or maybe three Zonyas like and a stopwatch? Yeah, I think that's... Sometimes more time damage, but not too bad we get carry. No, oh, that's okay. Like, uh, we have a lot of material we can go over and talk about. Because, again, like, for me, uh, you should go defend your wave. This is more important. Okay, Baron it is. We can't end. So, yeah, there was three stopwatches and um, two Zonyas, which is pretty impressive. So, what matters here is that you commit to a call. It doesn't matter what it is, just commit to it. I mean, at, le at least now I see, like, all the areas where I go, where I can, like, get better. Exactly. Another thing that you can, uh, another thing about defining your early game and defining what is success also makes it so when you are having a good, when you are having a good game that you can define what the, like, it's easier to look at other things because now you're confident like, oh, my early game is really good. I, I did exactly what I set out to achieve. So you can use your energy to focus on everything else. Yeah. I mean, I did this game leaning fair wasn't too bad. It was really good. I mean, I think you played lane, like, honestly, perfectly. I think, personally, I would not go into GA this game. I would have sold the stopwatch and go for something else, but, like, it's whatever. Like, I would probably go Edge of Night this game, but, like, who cares? Just play the game. Well, that was a bit spicy, but actually, I quite like it. If I had hammer, yeah. Be careful of uh, overcommitting here. You can lose. Like, you can put yourself in a really tough spot. So basically, peeing in these situations can also be really good. Just something to think about. Mm -hmm. uh, you might be on vision, so be careful. Be standing on your pink and basically peeing can be really good if you want to do that. Um, going for the mid wave, for example, can also be good. Like, <clears throat> I'll talk about this after. Uh, you can go into J as well if you prefer, man. Like, I don't think it's bad. Like, whatever you prefer. I think Edge of the Night can be good. Sure. Sonny's Jax is common, yeah. Since his rework, he's he's actually mostly AP scalings. Uh, in terms of scalings on his kit, I do believe he has more AP scalings than AD scalings. Uh, or it's like 2 and 2. It's like the same. As far as I'm aware, like, his E scales, uh, his e scales with AP is W and his R. Um, I don't know about his Q. His Q might have AP too, actually. It might be like 4 AP scalings on his kit, if I'm not mistaken. It's either 3 or 4. And his AD, I think, is like... Uh, I think it still has some on his W, some on his Q, and some on his R, but uh, I do think he has one more scanning and AP on his E, specifically. She doesn't have Sonya, so she's always fucked there. Uh, this is Zaya's biggest strength, right? Melee champs running into her and then pulling the feathers, so uh, I need to be really careful getting baited by that. Again, nice discipline backing off first. I like it. They have good vision to see if they're getting collapsed on, so that just makes sense. Uh, like, I like selling stopwatch here and buying pink. Like just one pink. So, like, like I said, like I just like having like if I if it's a long sword or one pink, I prefer one pink. Two pinks if you have like a really like you have a plan on what you're doing with your pinks. But if you don't have a plan with your pinks, I think one pink is fine. You don't want to like overinvest your resources. Jack's gear AP scaling up, removing his rear. Oh, I guess then it's three and three. There you go. 150 damage is healing on Conqueror. So damage on Conqueror is harder to cal calculate. Um, but I do think this game Conqueror paid off. He did get a really large advantage 1v1. It just... Uh, I don't think him having Conqueror was the issue here this game. Nice. If you didn't tell me about the QE, right before, I would have died here. <laughs> Well, I like that you're patient about it, and uh, every time Jax jumps on you, you don't panic, which is a really good habit, and uh, that is something that's very good to see. So Jax is dead. Um, small thing here, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it again in the Vault review, but, like, proactively thinking about, like, should I be... Uh, proactively thinking about, uh, should I be... 
proactively TPing or should I be reactively TPing, right? So if there's a fight, do I wait until someone goes in and then TP or do I insta TP? Think about that right now and look at your team. I, look, I TP instantly, I think. I agree. It's just important that you, like, you're confident you in that, you know, you think about it. It also helps you define what TPs are yeah. good. You know, like, can I TP in the middle of the wave? Is that is that acceptable if, as Jace? Maybe not, right? So it helps you think about. And then sometimes you'll problem solve in the moment and be like, I need a ward. I can't, like, I can't just TP. I, I'll need you to ward for me. Um, so you can preemptively already mention, like, just drop a ward behind you guys wherever you go so I can insta-TP. Uh, especially if you're in competitive, right? Uh, working with teammates, yeah. like... I mean, in like... competitive, this is the kind of stuff I like to ask, but in solo queue, like, like you, like, like you can see, I'm like... Yeah, playing you're game. just playing the game, I get it, but what I'm saying is, like, if you practice it in solo queue and think about it in solo queue, you will also think about it in competitive, and that's what we want to get to, right? Yeah, I mean, I see. I agree with you. I should always make the effort to at least ping and see where it goes. Yep. Alright, that guy got caught. The staring contest. Careful baiting and engage. Um, sometimes you can bait your own teammates. Oh, in this case, you're baiting the enemy team really well, so well played. I mean, yeah. Masterfully done. Okay, Pedro going for the for the big plays. Ooh, Aphilios is too strong, actually. Aphilios doesn't win that, does he? Uh, I don't know. Aphilios is looking. She, she doesn't have feathers anymore. This is good. Really nice shot blast. Oh! Went a bit too greedy there, it's okay. I don't mind. Yeah. I mean, I thought I had range for the Oh, fuck, Q. that Runan's damage. That's kind of insane. That guild boss, that was greedy. Yeah. Wait, he, that guy stepped so far back. What is the Philos doing? He had a creep wave, no? He could always beat him. What? I mean, it's fine by me, but like, that was some virgin gameplay. I think we just do Baron here, no? And I guess if Lee flashes, does he still win? I'm not sure. I mean, if he times his Q well, if he times his green Q, he always wins. So I don't know. I feel like maybe I'm crazy. Oh, maybe man. he doesn't. It doesn't this matter. Game, like, my positioning is so bad. Like so much time I'm like. Going it's okay. It's okay. It's a, like I said, it's actually not easy to play this game. It's not easy to play. I, I, I wouldn't blame yourself. Uh, not having tenacity makes it a lot harder too. So keep that in mind. This is why uh, scaling runes can be nice. Yeah, it makes sense. Actually, it was great game for Tenacity. Like, yeah, every fight, good. I'm like, man, I could have done like 10 times more damage. That feels bad. Isn't Shoujin Shin really OP? Yeah, but this game, he won't get any value from the Shoujin, right? Like, you need to hit people to get the CDR. It doesn't feel like a game where he's gonna get that value. From what I can tell, um, I feel like hitting is the hard part. Honestly, I think you should just tank the W there and let Aphilios blow him the fuck out. The Sana self salts there? I feel like if she... No, oh, that's fine. I think the way we played it. I mean, Aphilios died in the end, so... I for this fight as well. I think it's... Uh, I think it was okay how you played it, honestly. You, you, you went in, did the most damage you could, and you baited Zaya to commit to you. Honestly, this Poppy's mechanics are really good. Like, I think this Poppy is, like, probably one of the best Poppies on the server, no? Like... Very few it's people are this good at Poppy. Yeah, he plays really well. I, I never played with that guy. But yeah, I think uh, I really like this game. Especially because you got a lot of good things going and you got a lot of bad things going. So, well, not bad necessarily, yeah. but like, could be better, right? Yeah, for sure. Those are the best games. I mean, it was as well first game of the day, you know. It and was a very I'm, good like, game. Used to the streaming things and all of the stuff? No. It's it was very sure. solid. I think you should be proud of yourself. Okay. Um... But yeah, like cookies, reboot, and uh, tenacity makes more it's sense. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. I think you had a really good game. All right. But I um, to this thing when like, I mean, I agree with you. I see like, I think like Jax should not start queuing this matchup. But I see a lot of Jax doing doing this. Okay. No, I mean the like, thing is, I think like, he's losing uh, if he does. See how it goes if I just like skill W and he jumps on me and then. Okay. Okay. Just, I think it's fine. Uh, also, keep in mind if he sees resolve, he will not do it. So, if you need resolve for that to work. He will never do it because he doesn't know if you have bone plating or not. And seeing resolve, he will assume that you have it. Yeah, it makes sense. sense. I mean, so I he think won't do he it. can even do it with unbone plating, like just skill W if you jump in and like exactly. Conqueror and I agree. Should be winning. 
Okay, um, do you have a, a POV vault? Because I actually kind of, I messed up. I didn't record uh, your game, so I can't go over it. Oh, yeah, actually I have it. Um... Perfect. I will, I will have you control the vault for me. I will just tell you what I want you to do, all right? Thank you, yeah. I appreciate that. This is his main account. Okay, yeah, he's going I through a tough time, it. which is why he got some coaching. If not, I can hop on the US and just uh, open the, the third party uh, vault. But that's something that I should work on. Sorry. It's my first time. Okay, I do have it. Let's go. Awesome. Let's go for it. All right. Let's have a look. I don't need to see the clicks, okay? The clicks okay. are like, that's like three steps further than what we need to work on right now. This thing is not easy to manipulate. 30 seconds, 10 seconds, but here we go. It's okay, it doesn't matter. Like, uh, honestly, you can just roll the game. Um, you can just go to, like, let me think. I need, I need to think about like, the events that happened in this game. So I actually really like how you played your early game. So you can just go, like, fast forward through it. Can you use arrow keys? Maybe that's easier. Yeah, you can just fast forward through most of the early game. Um, one thing to note uh, is, right, I, pause here. This recall timing is, like, one I want to discuss. Um, so go back mm -hmm. one and then this wave. Uh, these are the two key timings that you need to determine is wave three. <clears throat> and wave four are the key timings to recall. So I really like that you warded. It saved your life. Uh, had you just walked up and hit him, you would have died. So that's really good. But um, if you can pause here, so... Right. The reason why waves three and four are the important ones in these type of matchups is uh, that's when the wave starts equalizing. Okay? Yeah. So either you will crash in wave three, and then wave four, the wave will start bouncing back. Or you crash wave four, and the wave will start bouncing back on wave five. Right? Yeah. Pretty much all the time. Um, there's no matchup in the game where if one guy contests and the other guy gives, that it will not bounce on wave 3 or 4. Correct? Yeah, correct. So in other words, if you're on the pressuring side, so you're on the side that is doing the, the pressuring, you're pushing the wave in and crashing it, you need to ask yourself the question of, do I wave, do I, do I base on wave 3 or 4? And then, if no, I don't want to base, uh, I want to pressure, how does that look? And how does that eventually translate? Because the thing is, in this game, you decided to stay in pressure. Yeah. But you don't actually have any uh, incentive to do that. Because the timing where you fought him and killed him would have been the same if you came back from base with a tear or a longsword instead, is basically what I'm saying. So if you roll the clip now, uh, let's try and see what happens. So you can you go a little bit forward to wave 5, right? Um, so my point is, is how do you base now on wave 4 and you walk back to lane here? You would have been in a very similar lane state. Uh, just... Embed resource. You can just solo kill him. So yeah, right here is like, just roll the clip. You can just let it play. Uh, you don't have to fast forward or, 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 or go backwards. Uh, just just from when you crash the wave, if you can go back one more time. Oh, uh, because yeah. I want you to count the seconds. Yeah. How long does it take you to recall? It takes eight seconds. How long does it take you yeah, to I get mean, back to lane? Yeah. About it's 30 like seconds. 30 seconds. I would so my point is... The wave would be in the same spot and I can just keep my TP and the like... Yeah. My is point is, is, I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about the fight you have with him, right? Sorry, can you just play here. Just press, just press play. Yeah, you're gonna solo kill him, bro. You forgot? When where? It's, you're about you're in the next twenty seconds. So this this whole trading thing. Oh. You outplay him really hard, but this is not in your favor. Okay. This is winning for him. So right now, if he just leaves oh, after yeah, the stun, yeah, yeah. Yeah. he's in a way better spot than you are. Yeah, yeah. yeah because, Even if you have yeah. cookies. Even if you have cookies, he's still in a better spot than you are. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Now he he completely sends it, and you yeah, he really outplay him. To keep the trade for no reason. He could just back off here, right? He could have backed off when he stunned you. Yeah. Yeah, and then I have to base TP, and that sucks. Exactly. So the question I'm asking you is, if you go back, well, like you can go back to the time where you you crashed the wave here. The question I'm asking you is, what's more consistent? You know, like so, if you wanna if you wanna look for this fight and you think you're gonna do this consistently in some matchups, you can do it. I'm not saying don't do it ever. Like if you are really aware of the timings and maybe you're looking for a base, so like. Uh, one thing to note, if you see us everything but two creeps, you can get longsword, double longsword on this recall. So wave four, you can get two longswords, 700 gold. So that's a really good base. And usually I would recommend that's what you play for. Um, but if things happen, you can't see us, you can go for like a cull, you can go for tier, you can go for other options. The point is, is like, I want you to establish for yourself, this is the first timing where you having the pressure and the crash is the first decision you make, right? The first decision in your laning phase that is a big deal because this will set the pace for the rest of your lane. So you getting in a bad situation there and blowing your TP, uh, that can be really bad if you can't freeze the wave. If you have to freeze the wave, you have to trade with him. If you have to trade with him, you can get ganked. You see where this is going, right? 
you're basically creating an inconsistency and that can yeah. either come out really good or that can come out really bad but the thing is uh usually it's going to come out somewhere towards the ah could be better for me that's yeah. my experience again for yourself playing the game i just want you to think about this think okay of here, like like listen no no i don't think he can i don't think he can i don't care about listen it's not about that uh, obviously if he can be that's scary but he he ganked level three so if he did three camps top side hovered you level three at 240 or 220 and then he's a 320 back top lane he is honored honestly like that is crazy shit. <laughs> that I mean, is a really committed gank i always okay? feel like uh, enemy jungler could be here when i play like this kind of matchups but he uh, could be i'm just saying with you like it's just way more consistent to, even without the jungler to like just reset here or just like just focusing on having proper CS in the first wave and just recall here and like get double long slot. I would if be that's what you think is record. good in your matchup, then you can do that. Again, I just want you to think about it, okay? I'm giving you this as a way of you determining for yourself how mm -hmm. you want to play your matchups and what you want to do. For me, that's the conclusion I came to. So often yeah, I, I will I will prioritize like, this and like then the, I have pressure in um, something that I used to do on Graves, for example, and Olaf as I would proxy the next, I'd, I'd crash three waves and proxy wave four. Um, <laughs> The and then people like people thought I was like like it was like crazy, but it's really nice. Like honestly, it's like one of the best. Like when when I can do this and I walk back out the lane, I know the game is good. You know, I know if I proxy way four base by my double long sword, like I'm playing Graves or Olaf. I'm like, dude, this game it's a wrap. Anyway, let's see. I'm I don't recommend to do it on Jace necessarily, but he could do it. Um, just something you can think about. Anyway, like like I said, you can roll the clip. This is this whole situation. Just think about it, right? Like this initial trade, like. Uh, I actually really like how you space him uh, and outplay you. I play him really hard. Like honestly, that the fact that you get the auto E there is like crazy illegal. Um, but then you also like, yeah. Basically, if he stunned you there and backed off, you agree with me that your spot is way worse than his is. Yeah. And if you just base and play around the fact that Diana's in the enemy jungle in the area, you could even TP. You know, you could base TP and just play on the fact that Diana's near you and then really hard trade just to try and yeah. get a kill. Mm. That's playing for yeah. a kill. Okay, that is you're setting up a kill for your jungler. I'm not saying that's good. I'm not saying that's bad. Again, I'm giving you the option to think about it, right? I think I like this play. Like, if I just recall, then uh, we're going to have, like, both TP back and then have Diana on my side. He will I'm... not TP back, right? He'll stay, and then you're going to fight him really hard. And then if he fights he's back... He's going to TP back, yeah, because he's midlife. Yeah. Exactly. He's, he's just going to CS. And then he, if he fights back, then I can gank him and kill him. Yeah. I, I think it's really good because then the wave is frozen and he has to TP on the... Keep in mind, you will have to base on... again. So the follow-up on that play is you have to base again. Yeah, so but then you won't get a big lead, okay? I'm just being real. You will not get a big lead. This is usually to get your jungler a big lead. So this is something I used to try a lot with, with Selfmade. Uh, when he was playing carry junglers and pathing to, to, like, when he would recall, he would come back to topside around this time. I would TP back and fight really hard. And then I would um, I would just share the next waves with him. And I, I would give him a kill and share the next waves. And it would put him in a really good position oh, to carry the game. Yeah, when I push after we get the kill on Jax? Yes. It's not oh, for me. Okay. It's all for Diana. Diana would be level five with, like, Alternator plus Dark Seal, and I knew the game was over. Yeah, yeah because if I okay, if we push, I think I don't have a lead. But uh, can't I just even like, if even if trust me, there? if you TP back here, and you kill him and base and walk back, you still don't have that big a lead. Really don't. Oh, it's okay. it's a lead, but it's not much. It's not relevant. Anyway, I just wanted to go yeah, through that process with you, just to give you another idea. Um, exactly, like you're not gonna win the game through top doing that. You're gonna win the yeah, game exactly. through jungle, and that's just the decision of like if I TP there, that's for the jungler to get an opportunity, not for me. All right. I don't mind doing this. I mean, he needs to see it, right? <laughs> because my point is, my point is, is I, like, on Jace you probably shouldn't do it. But if you're playing like Orn, Scion, like tanks, like it can be interesting. So just again, it's an option. It's something you can think about. Let's roll the clip. Uh, let's just go until. Let me think. I mean, honestly, you can just like fast forward through. You know, you can go over the. You can yourself go over the mechanics. But honestly, I think your early game was really, really clean. Like you, you outspaced him. Pretty much every single time he, every single time he traded you in the first ten minutes, you you all played him, like really hard. I think so. Honestly, I, I quite like it. I like you see like the way that you're pacing backwards here. Like I feel like you're doing that because you watched the Zeus fall. Uh, am I crazy? <laughs> yeah, I did. Exactly. So watching a good player play can really give you the perspective. And in here, that clip backwards, you mentioned it in the game as well. It's like that was just like you hesitated because you weren't yeah. sure if you go range form that you would beat him or not. Um, but I I do think if you hard committed there, you would have beat him. Um, yeah, I think just so. Also, I had Conqueror. I think it's 
gonna be like exactly that. that's why i think if you have other runes you can't do that but with conqueror fully yeah. stacked i do think you would beat him on your next e eq but my point is, is i like that you were spacing i like you eq him and eqs in immediately you're really patient with this like uh, i mean just really well played honestly you have conqueror stacked and then right now the question is do i kill him before he kills me if i go range form and uh also q him he has flash so th that is to know there is something to keep in mind so again i don't think you have to take the risk here uh, you stepping backwards is always winning. You stepping forwards, he might be able to outplay you. So keep that in mind. Again. Yeah, makes sense. Up to you. All right. I think, to be honest, I think it's not worth uh, the risk here. I agree with you. I think I you're think winning so hard fucked. already. The wave he's is going to be frozen. Okay. He's fucked. He's, he's fucked. Like, I wouldn't even have flashed after him if I were yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. But like, this W he gets, like, he's really good for him. And I take so much damage from the wave. Like I do like one One thing to note is you're about to hit level five, and that's gonna give you a burst of like it's gonna give you a chunk of XP yeah. and gold. And I you still have if I don't take this free damage. It's okay, like he's fucked anyway. Even if you take this free damage, he can't play, so don't worry. <laughs> it's all good. And then you flash after him, and I think again, I think this is okay. I, I don't mind it. There's actually like some killer instinct, you know, it's never it's not a bad thing. I, I'm just worried. <laughs> it is what it is, you know. You're just like you're you you are trying this a situation where you should never get a kill. You are trying to force a kill out of it. That in that to me is a, a killer instinct. You know, it's like I have no right killing this guy, but I'm going to fucking try. Is what what you're saying? You know, that's I mean, what I see on my screen right there. Like, that is, for like, me is the definition of a killer instinct. When you play you know? too much champion, you you get some bad habits. You know, it's like guy and players that will always overstay because they think like Garen is like you know unkillable. I know what you mean, and, and I agree with you. The, the killer instinct come from playing Fiora. Sure. Uh, again, I. I think it's, it's up to it's you. Good that you point it out. It's good that you're aware of it, and that's all. Like that's all I want you to be is just aware of it. Because if you can tell yourself, like, okay, I try, I'm trying way too hard to kill this guy, that's good enough. All right, you warded, very good. You play respectfully, very good. Um, yeah, so walking in from the lane bushes here is really good. I like that you go around. This is popularized by Baus, of course, um, but uh, was always a good play. Uh, obviously, Sion very good at this but jace is also really good if you come out of the bush and you burst someone like you pretty much win you know you can fast forward here you're gonna dive this guy really clean it's all gonna be great like you can skip past it i don't mind you can skip past it like if you want to watch it again you can but uh what mm -hmm. i'm interested in is um the herald situation when you put herald down so the first thing if you can go back can you go back to when you put the ward i think warding the golems is generally better um why is because if you ward the golems usually people won't hug the top wall so you can see them entering anyway and um, that way you can yep. get some information for yourself on the jungler uh since that can be more relevant in case they come from another direction i like mm -hmm. how you played this uh, i think like you know i think you could have played better for sure like right now i don't think you should panic an e here uh, yep. i think you should just hit him uh and then we'll see but i think eing him and just playing to run is also not bad i think the fight looked pretty scuffed so i'm fine with that we do Herald here, it's A-OK. -okay. I like that you're hitting it. Look, top wave is, is is dead anyway. You look at it, so you confirm that it's dead. That's good. Like dead in the sense you have nothing to do there. You have you have no job right now, you know? Like yeah. right now you're unemployed. Your top wave is gone. You're waiting until a new job job offer comes in, aka the next wave. So you, you hit the herald in the meanwhile. And then, you know, you play a really nice I really like the way you set up the the kill here. I think you mentioned about bad mechanics, but I actually like how you played it. I think you melee range him, hug Morgana, so if he ever presses Q, he gets Q'd in the face and then he can't play the game. You know, auto attack him to stack conqueror, save your E, E him off of you to, to buy some time. Uh, there you go. Just clean and solid, very nicely set up. And then here you ping Diana to not put down the Herald. And I just want you to I just want you to pause and I want you to think about two things. First thing is uh, does it get you your mythic? And second thing, does it get you, uh, does it get jungle his mythic? Okay, so if you just pause right now and, and on a timing where you press tab, ideally, doesn't have to, but uh, <clears throat> you don't know this, obviously, unless you're in voice comms with someone, usually. But you can also, if you're really smart, judge based on how much gold he has. In this case, I think getting top tower will almost always get him his, his mythic. So it's just something to think about is like, how much influence mm. does that have on the game? Yeah. Diana getting mythic thing. for her next ult or not? And That's pretty much game over. Like this guy is gonna have divine. He's gonna have like proto build, and I have, and you're like, gonna have eclipse too. You have it like, already anyway. But the point is, is you can just think about this. It's, yeah. it's something that, uh, especially in competitive, is more relevant. In solo queue, I would say trusting your jungler might bite you in the ass because you're going to give Jax a lot of farm for this yeah. because he's probably gonna, you know, he's either gonna freeze or he's gonna push two to three waves and. You're still in base, you're delaying your tempo to take the tower, etc. So I'm not saying this is always the right thing to do. I'm just, again, 
trying to bring this to your thought. I'm mm -hmm. trying to get this to be something you think about I when you make this decision. I because sometimes... No, no, and, and that's great. If you thought about it, that's perfect. I ju I'm just not sure if you thought about Diana getting her mythic, because that's something that a lot of top laners don't think about. They only think about no, their I, mythic. I didn't think about this part. But um, Diana coming out of base level 7 mythic. with Proto Belt and Ult, like, wherever yeah, she walks on the map, true. they're fucked, you know? Um, and that's something that you can think about, um, yep. and that's all I wanted to bring up. So, awesome. You can fast forward to the next port. Mm. Yeah, you can just fast forward. Nothing really happens. Uh, you respect here for the next few minutes, and I really like it. I mean, again, you don't know where Lee is, but you know your jungler's doing something, so you just respect. <laughs> just good gameplay, you know? Uh, you lose your flash, so let's go back. It's, it's when it's when you go for the double kill here. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah, indeed. I respect it. I respect it. It's for the content. I get it. But actually, it's really important that you have the habit of not doing this. Um, so in a, in a pro game... You saving your flash here, even if Jax lives, his death is worth less than your flash. Yeah. Because if you have flash, they can never touch you. Like, never. I mean, like, especially when enemies have, like, Rakan and Lysandra, right? Like, they have so much follow-up and engage. Yes. And but I'm more so specifically, in, like, as a weak side champ, like, right now, your weak siding is Jace, you know? Like, Diana's bottom side taking everything. Yeah. You're waiting for your Diana to come to your side. And if she doesn't, you're still farming six creeps per wave. That's fine. Like, yeah. That's not weak side. That's like just neutral side. You know, like you're not giving up anything. Weak side is when you're giving up something. In this situation, you're not giving up anything. You're just laning and you're farming every single creep. It doesn't get better than that, right? And meanwhile, Dana's taking camps. Dana's taking drakes. Dana's pressuring bot, etc. Now your bot lane, when when the the pressure swapped, right? The bot lane is is now the the, the, the lane that needs to play defensive because Dana crossed into top. Uh, they immediately die to a gank. So just to show, uh, just to bring that up is like. It is very fluid. Who is strong and weak side? It is not something that is defined by like existing or the lanes you picked. It is defined by the gameplay. So again, your spacing is really good. Your patience on E is really good. Uh, I really like how you play this. Um, just generally speaking, well done. And in here, yeah, maybe you could have killed him if you were like really committed to fist fighting him. But you didn't see Lee Sin in time. So the fact that you waited until you saw Lee Sin to fully commit to the trade is, again, a really good habit. You do not want to put yourself in a position where um, mm -hmm. you're committing to this fight before Lee Sin uh, reveals himself. All right, awesome. Very nice. Yeah, you can just skip forward here until... Um, let me see... Oh, well, the oh, first thing is... Uh, you, 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 so this is just like... Um, I think this is the first thing. So you're level 11 you have two items, right? You're coming out of base. I want you to think about what am I doing? Okay, what am I going to do? How do I influence the game? Because having the habit of going top here and fixing the wave, good. But like, what does this translate into? You know, why are you taking this wave? Why are you taking the next wave? Like, you're taking this because mm -hmm. it's your job and you need to farm. But the question I'm asking is... Um, you know, what does that translate into? By the way, I think you get a one-shot Jax there if you play better. Uh, like, you would just eat him into your tower and just killed him straight up if you actually fought him. Yeah. Uh, at this point, you just delete him, by the way. You are 20 times him. Yeah. Um, but again, this is like, that stuff, you'll figure it out. I trust that mechanics is not what I have to do. What I'm saying is, like, right now, the first I thing I feel is when I you came out of base... I wanted to clear the top wave because I don't get, like, the top tier one. No, no, I understand that you want to clear the top wave. The question is, do you need to? No. Like right now, if you, if you clear this wave... With my team, right? Like I'm two items, if I'm in the fight... I yeah, so right now, win. you kill these two melee creeps, can't you just walk down the river and go fight? You can. And then if yeah, the fight is not there, you can go back top. Because the thing is, the wave is so far. Yeah. Right? So that's the first thing. The second thing, like, so, so that's this situation. But in general, I want you to be thinking about... The mindset should be, when you walk out of lane, like walk out into your lane, the mindset should be is, when can I group? The soonest. Right? Like, when can I do something and where? I mean, I know he was the perfect timing, right? Like, I'm yeah, him sure. 15 minutes. Level exactly. Four. I agree. Like, so if you walk out of base, next time you walk out of base, you, you take the waves you need to take and then roam. Because the thing is, you don't want to take extra. You just take the waves that allow you to move. And this last wave allowed you to move. Now, the second thing is here, I don't mind you showing on this wave. Just please blow it up and run. Like, right now, <laughs> like, like, you take your sweet-ass time getting every single CS. Just blow up the melees, you know, blow up the cannon and just get the fuck out, you know? It's, it's no need yeah. to do anything crazy. And then yeah, I agree with you. I think if you if you were more aware of your strength, you probably could have just blown up Leeson and double killed them. But this is just bad decision. I'll allow the it. Beginning. Exactly. The issue is not the mechanics. The issue is the fact that you 
we're in a position that was just not favored, even though you have all the say in this game. The next thing, uh, this Taba, I actually don't like it that much because I think you're just going to die to Rakan and Lusandra anyway if you buy Ninja Tabai. Um, and I don't think it particularly saves you from losing to Lee Sin once he gets yeah. fed. So, in my opinion, I wouldn't buy it, but I don't mind. It's up to you. Like, I'm, I mean, just, I I'm just, again, something to think, think about. Do you think if I had Legend Tenacity, though, that I could stack it with Merc? Or just go straight up? Well, I think, I think you, if you go Tenacity, you can stack it with Ninja Tabai and you can tank CC and AD damage. But the thing is, if you can't tank CC... The point of buying defensive items on a champ like Jace kind of goes out the window. Because it's like... Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. It's only useful if you're gonna pick fights one v one with Jax on side lane. And my point is, is like you don't need Tabai to win that. Yeah. You, does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Then I should just go Lucidity, right? And just have more spells. I think so. Yes. Because my 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 like my point is, is like the game state you're in and they're buying your boots. You're going to beat Jax anyway. You don't need Ninja Tabai to beat Jax, and Ninja Tabai will yeah, not save you if anyway. if you get collapsed on. Like if you're two v one against Lee Sin and Jax, you lose anyway. Yeah, I'm good. If you get CC'd by Lissandra and Lisa cues you, you're dead anyway. Yeah. If Rakan RWs you and you get hit by Zaya or Jax or whoever, you're dead anyway. And th that's like the next step of thinking of defensive items is like, how do they actually interact in the game, right? And in this case, if you're 1v1, you win no matter what. If you're 2v1, you're fucked no matter what. So they're kind of irrelevant. Waste of gold. Not a waste of gold, but not that good, you know? Yeah. Actually, they save you bot lane later, so yeah. We take those. Anyway, here, um, good that you were pausing. Um, you should just decide what you want to do and commit to it. So if you go back once, like back to when like Zaya and stuff were still fighting, like if you go back, there was a fight with Zaya, like here, uh, Lee Sin just died. Like this whole fight, you should just commit to what you want to do. If you want to TP, commit as soon as you're back up, you TP instantly and you join the fight and you pressure the opponents. And if you don't want to TP, don't TP. So I actually like you just letting this guy die because it's just like, if you TP now, he's yeah, still going to die. Good. You might yeah. kill him. You might not kill him. And then you also have shit tempo. In this case, you said, I'm going to go push out bot wave no matter what. And you commit to that. And I like that. I think it makes sense. You deny him the cannon creep, a good habit. Not necessary, but I appreciate it. Again, like, why not? You know, like, if you didn't, I wouldn't say anything about it. But if you did, great. All right. Same thing here. We group, but what for? You know, it's like, I want you to think about that. You know, like, we move up the river here, but what are we moving for? What are we accomplishing? Let's go back here. So... I think, yeah, I was just unaware of, like, enemy tempo that they were already... No, no, that's more. okay. But I want you to... So, the first thing is, like, because you're just doing this out of habit, right? You're moving mid because it's the right thing to do, quote-unquote, right? Yeah. Next game, you don't die here. I still don't want you to move mid, necessarily. I want you to think about what resources there are to gather. I want you to think about, like, is someone answering top lane? Like, I want you to think about these things, okay? I don't want you I mean, to... Yeah, I feel like I have no job, so this is why I, I, uh, I okay. wanted to go mid, you know? So in this case, if Poppy's not taking your job, uh, taking her job of defending top, maybe you should just base and go top, right? So I'm, I'm just helping you again think of mm -hmm. ways to um, be active in the map, right? So in this case, if you see Jax on your screen, right, you will send him home, right? Like, you will literally just push him out. Like, you will just run him down, and you will... If he's 1v1, you will just... Kill him at the tier two. Like you literally walk him down all the way to tier two. If he doesn't want to fight you, and if he wants to fight you, he'll kill, you'll kill him. So my point is, if someone isn't defending the tower here, what you can do if you have no job is just take their job. So in this case, you will get two waves. So because you got this wave, and then you will get like, you'll get some of the next wave as well. Mm -hmm. Not all of it. Depends if it's a cannon as well. But the point is, like if you after blowing up the waves, if you go back right now to when you killed the bot wave, um, there's no job mid. So let's ask if there's a job anywhere else. Yeah, top lane because Jax just respawned and pushed. Well, the and thing is, Poppy should have that job, right? Yeah. But, but Poppy doesn't, doesn't, doesn't take the job. It. So the question is, like, I want you to pink this bush and then press S. That's it. That's all I want, okay? So I want you to press S and think about what your options are. That's the habit I want you to build because, I again, mm -hmm. I, maybe I die, maybe you die. Like, this is a good play by the enemy team, and I, I'm not saying this because you died here. I'm saying this because if you are not going to make it on this wave, and the next wave is dangerous, it's never a bad idea to pink this bush and just wait. Just give it a moment, think about it, absorb the map, especially when you have TP that you can react with. Because, um, you know, in hindsight, it's very dark and very scary and you die. But even if it's not, you have time until the next wave is here. And having the habit of when you have time to use it to get vision control is good. And that's all I want. I want you to pink here and I want you to have the habit of when you move, you leave a pink where you're walking. Because that is never going to be a bad thing. Like, having a pink right now in the bush you're in is never bad. Yeah, never. for sure. Awesome. All right. 
That's by the way why two pings can be really good. Just to just to clarify, sometimes two pings can be really good because, um, yeah, you put a pink where you're coming from, and then you put a pink at your end destination, and then you replace the pink where you put it where you came from, but you know you're safe. All right, awesome. Anyway, we get we get caught and die. That's fine. I don't mind. It was a good play by the enemy team. I didn't see it on the map either, to be fair with you. Uh, but this is like. Especially the gates map, like having a habit of using your camera to look at the, the, the gates, you can see when people take it. So you taking it right now, the enemy team sees that in Fog of War. So if mm -hmm. you put your camera on top of the actual gate, you, you can see that gate. happening. Yep. Yeah, you can see that happening. So having a habit of, if nothing is happening on the map, just look at the gates. You can you can often count, count how many people are on a certain side of a map um, just by doing that. Mm-hmm. Don't get baited, though. People can cross map. Just saying, like... <laughs> you know when yeah, we, they take it and who, like how many. Take, right? So I like that here. Just go back again here. Uh, just you can go back once, just so I can bring this up here. I like that you hear. Uh, the first thing is don't have the habit of showing on mid wave. Okay, you show on this wave, and I don't get why. First thing. Yeah, me too. Second <laughs> thing. Good. Second thing. I took um, a phone. Used. Uh -huh. I don't. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, if you take the casters, if you take the melees, I'd complain. But like taking the casters is acceptable. It's like I'll allow it. Okay. If I made if it's a cannon wave and you take the casters, it's fine. But if it's a, like any other wave and you take the casters, it's not fine. It's just it's a cannon wave, so it's fine. Anyway, semantics. Uh, the next thing is I want you to drop your pink like somewhere. Pick a place, drop it, drop it mid, like drop it in the in the in the like whichever bush. Yeah, makes just sense. drop it. Leave your pink. Like make it harder for the enemy team to, to play around you guys. Like right now, you walk into this bush, you take the vision. Great. Now put yours down. This is again a habit I want you to have. It's not about whether it made a difference now or not. It's just. You should drop your vision. You have a, you have two wards. Like right now, you could have blue orbed one bush and pink the other, and you've done your support's job. You have vision in topside. Boom, f just for free because you did a good job. The way you play this fight was good. IMO uh, specific. You got black shield, so you can hammer in. But if you don't get black shield, you should always stay on range and just hit, which is good. You did maximum damage. Good. Like right now, you drop a pink in here. Maybe the enemy team trying to collapse with Jax get baited, and you can turn earlier than Jax gets there, and you can get a really good opportunity. Again, I'm not saying it will or won't happen, I'm giving you a maybe, because this is what it's about, right? Right now, yeah. drop a pink on this Baron, why not? You have this pink, what is it doing? Nothing. Drop it on the Baron. Maybe the enemy team shows three people on bottom side, and now that you have Baron pinked, oh shit, we know they don't have vision, for a fact, yeah. because you pinked it, and now Diana Jace do a lot of Baron damage, Aphilios, a lot of Baron damage, you might get a Baron out of that, like, what I'm yeah, trying to say is, littering vision allows you to make better decisions. I mean, if it's to buy pink and not use it, just don't buy it, right? Exactly. But and we are good players, so we want to yeah. buy pings and use them. <laughs> that <laughs> is the course. logic. Right, <laughs> so um, we agree that being good at vision control is a hallmark of a good player. And that's why, um, again, using that vision is important. And the, the fundamental of what I want to get, the, the fundamental point I want to get across is, vision allows you to make a better decision. And that's it. Yeah. The more you have, the better your decision is going to be. Awesome. Let's look at this fight, see how you play it. Uh, all right, this is where she gale forces like into you, and it's just really awkward. And honestly, Lissandra passive kind of fucking smorphed there. Um, yeah, Lissandra passive yeah. just kind of baited you. Like, I think if there was no Lissandra passive, you would have absolutely killed Desire, because right there you got slowed, right? So you couldn't reach her. Mm. So it was a bit unlucky because she was dead, so I didn't really account for it either. Uh, but either way, it, it's fine, you know, it's all good. We see Poppy smurf a bit. Like, honestly, like, it's Poppy's really good. Like, I don't know. His Poppy mechanics are clean. Uh, let's Especially look at one of the fights later. Yeah. People playing this champion, right? Exactly. Yeah. It's a really unpopular champ. That's why. So I, I kind of want to look at. I don't know what's the name. Yeah. Popushka I is what oh, I call Popushka. her. <laughs> uh, here I go, but. Oh. Yeah, yeah, sure. Again, I don't mind. I, I don't mind at all. I don't mind at all. All right. An ATP. All right, let's it's go back to when it. the first when you EQ'd the uh, Lissandra, like you reveal information there you don't need to yet. I think when someone's collapsing, you want to wait as long as possible. So go back more. No, not this one. The, the one before that. You, you you put her on alert. Right now, you're putting her on, on high alert. Oh, yeah. She's thinking like, so the thing is, is like she gets EQ'd. She's like, oh, I'm going to back off, right? Um, mm -hmm. Now you go for the wave, which like neutralizes it. But the point is, is like I think what's better is to drop the wave and go around and kill her. If you go back yeah. once, you'll see. Like just walk through the try and go kill her. Like, yeah. like you solo yeah. kill her even. Like I'm pretty sure one v one you can kill her. Yeah. If you start the fight in hammer and she has to use her spells on you when you're in hammer, you have way too much MR. Like right now, I think your hammer gives you like thirty or so MR, which is a lot. So. Yeah, especially like yes. Yeah, <clears> with a clip so, yeah, shield. Like, no 
Yeah, yeah, with, with the clip shield and, and hammer MR, I don't think she can kill you, and uh, you can just kind of beat her up. So, like, just take the path to kill her here, because your Dana's pinging, I want to kill her. And Dana's coming over vision, okay? So you have to, like, there's vision in the pit, but even if there's not, when you take a gate, people can know. And the point is, is just align yourself, right? Right now, either ping Dana back and say no, which is too late, by the way, if she takes the portal, but I'm just saying ping her back, no, I want the wave, or commit. And in this case, I think the right call is just to try and kill her, because... I actually think it's a pretty good call. I think it's a nice look for from Dana here. Um, yeah. I don't, like, again, if Morgana and Aphelios are hovering with the mid power we have, this is just a good play. If they're not, it might be sketchy, but in this case, Lee Sin is shown topside after the fact. Again, I get why you didn't run at her. My point is, like, I'm the type of player where it's like, my team wants to make a practice play. I will always try to follow up and, and try to make it a reality. Uh, yeah, either way. Sense. I like is you try to problem solve. To use, right? Yeah. Killing fed people is good. I, I like the creativity there with the with the flash EQ. Um, all in all, I, I like the way you approach this. Not bad at all. Actually, I just remembered. Um, so we'll go back to uh, the to a point earlier, a macro point earlier. Uh, actually, let's do it now. Uh, can you go back to when you base before Drake? <clears throat> it's the third Drake. No, it's the Wait, second Drake, I think. It's the second Drake. Oh. It's when Jax is bot in your top. No, no, it's later, it's later, it's later. It's like the tier one top oh, is dead and okay. Jax shows bot. I think okay. if you stayed top, you would have ended the game. It's after this death, I think. No. After this When one. is it? Wait, second Drake? No, I think it's second Drake, yeah. Do you go back? And you have to be at faulty minutes, something like this. Yes, it is somewhere. You're really strong right here. I think it's right here. It's like after this sequence. Yes, right there. Can you go back? You based here. Yeah. I think here, if you go back, if you stay here... Wait, is, is it this one? I think it's right after you base, actually. It's right after you base. Is it a... There's a moment where Drake spawns and Jack shows bot and Lee Sin's dead. That's the situation I remember. Then maybe it's third Drake because right here, Lee Sin is not dead. I think it's, yeah, I think it's third Drake then. But, like, there was a situation where, like, you, had, you could have had so much pressure on the map if you stayed. Um, and you decided, ah, I think it might have been before that. I don't know. Fuck, I forgot. I actually forgot about it in the game as well. Like, I forgot when we were reviewing. And maybe but... it's next Drake right? because this Drake... Right? No, no, I think it's this one. Can you go back? Can you go back? I think it's this one. Can you check? Let me see. You base for, like... Go back to what... You... I think it's this one. Go back more. Back more. You were in top. And you 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 had an opening to pressure oh, yeah, really actually, hard on the map. Yeah, yeah, here. Can you go back one more? It's before you base. It's before you base. Yes, it's exactly here. No, no, it's perfect. When you go here top, you base, but you have no incentive to base. Yeah. Like, just roll the clip, you'll see. Look at the map, right? Lee Sin is dead. You're you're still giga strong, right? Like, you're 5 and 3. You're giga strong right now. You're going to catch the top wave, and then you're going to base. I like that you're hovering. Really good. But now that you go top, Lee is dead. Jax is going to show bot. You should be playing to absolutely murder this top tier 2. The amount of pressure on the map you're going to put, like, you basing for this Lost Whisperer, who cares? Like, look at the map right now. Pause. Just pause. Pause and look at it. And tell me that you on this next wave top right now is not just unplayable for the enemy team. Uh, it is. <laughs> it's it really is. hard to play the game for the enemy team when you are showing I on this next wave top and taking it in their face. But I'm safe. The thing is, is they don't know because, like, I assume they have no vision in the lane. So by the time you show your face on that wave, it's already gone. Because your team has mid prow. So that's the thing, right? Yeah. Your team has mid prow. So they have to react to us. Uh, because Zaya has to stay to catch the mid wave, or she has to make the proactive call right now. If Jace shows on top wave, we kill him, which is a really good play, but I think it's really high level, and not a lot of people are going to make this call, especially with Rakan showing mid. They're not even thinking about going top right now. They're thinking about Drake, 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 which is what everyone's thinking, right? Jax is thinking, I'm going, going both. I'm going to, you know, push both deep, um, then go Drake, flank, um. whatever. Right now, if you push up with this wave top, you have so much pressure on the map, it's unbelievable. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's really it, hard though. to play because. Again, you don't even have to win 1v1 against anyone. And because the thing is, push the wave, right? you just and have to push the wave and then they have to respond to you. Because if they don't yeah. and you see them, you will take the tier 2. And if they do, you just wait. Basically, you just wait, right? You just wait. You see someone on the map, you react. You don't even have to pressure first. You can wait for them to make their move and then react to their move. And you're always winning. Because if they group and fight, you can TP. If they group and botch the engage, you take a tier 2. If they go top and defend, you TP and outnumber them or have a better state. Because again... Even if Jack's base is right now and comes top, like, if you TP in, he's losing farm. Yeah. 
which is just a good thing because you farm the wave and then TP'd, which means he doesn't farm the wave and then TPs and then yeah, you have a wave, two waves. The wave anyway. Well, the thing is, like, obviously, if he TPs in and you win the fight, that's perfect. But regardless of the outcome of the fight, the habit and the setup is perfect, and that's what I'm talking about. All right, great. I'm happy that I remember mm -hmm. this and happy we got here because again, you recalling here is not as valuable. So even if you could buy a full item, you know, think about it. You know, is this the fight I want to? Base TP like, and fight to the like, death. You want me to go top and still push? I'm saying, let's say you have a hack and you have 2,000 more gold and you can buy Cyrilla straight up. The question is, I want you to ask the question, okay? That's all I want. I want you to ask the question. Do I want yeah. to fight this Drake no matter what? Yes or no? If you're playing a champ like Aatrox, Renekton, yes, yes, and yes. Why? Because three and four items don't do shit for you. Like, yeah, they do something, but this is your best timing. Right? If you're a mid-game spiking champ that spikes on these bruiser items, you want to fight this dragon. If you're a champ that scales three, four items like Fiora, Jace, um obviously like Jax, Nar are like in the middle. Like my point is is just think about it. Do I value this gold income from tier two top more and accelerating my Cyrildos I mean, I to get it at 23? Situation. Yeah, you get it at 23 or 22 and a half minutes instead of at 25. Yeah, you should deal. You know, us having two drakes, them having one, but me having Cyrilda's two minutes earlier because, again, 600 gold is so much gold, by the way. Plus the waves you're getting that you wouldn't be getting. Like you, I would say usually you would get like roughly eight, eight to 900 gold for, for trading a top tier two. Uh, trading a top tier two for a dragon will net you eight to 900 gold on one specific player. Um, Mad Lions in 2020 used to do the uh, 2020 and 2021. They used to do this a lot with Humanoid. He would play Oriana type champs, and he would just go. To, they would just trade a tier two top for for Drake, and he would get a second item before anyone else. And then they fight the next Drake when he has two items, and he would kill everyone because that's what happens when you have a Fed Victor, Fed Oriana. And um, I actually think it's a really good play. I think it's really smart. <clears throat> uh, and I just think I just want you to think about it, right? And I want you to make the call. You know, like. Right now, you're like, I want my Cerullas. Because, again, your poke right now isn't that relevant, IMO. Like, the only target you can poke that really stings is Zaya. Everyone I mean, else, I, I they don't really care. Until I get Cerildos. So, in this type of game, think about it. Okay? Think about, like, do I reactive TP? Do I proactive TP? Do I base and am I there on the timing? And then, once you get your Cerildos, oh, basically, determine how many items you need to be there in the moment and start poking. And in this game, it's three. Next game, it might be two. Point is, determine that and then make decisions based on that. And don't just go through the same motions every single game because that's the habit, right? I want you to think about the decisions you make and break the habits. Because uh, habits are good, can be good, can be bad. I think most of the time having good habits is a good thing. Right? So, for example, buying pinks and boarding, etc. Like, these are all going to be habits that you build. But if you're actively thinking about it you can always open yourself up to change which is the mm -hmm. hardest part about this game because yeah. the game changes all the time your perspective has to change with it and if you only rely on your habits and stop actively thinking you're going to limit the amount of decisions you can make that are going to allow you to do better and that is basically it all right i don't think the rest of the game has anything that interesting so i think i'm going to leave it at that for you mm -hmm. um to wrap it up I think your mechanics are really good. And like I said, I really want you to focus on making proactive decisions. That you are thinking about in, like before it happens. Okay. Mm. Yeah. I want you to proactively think. Okay. So before you make a decision, I want you to be thinking about I want you have to have thought about it as you're going into the situation. Like, if I'm trading with someone, why am I trading? If I'm reacting, like, you know, how do I trade, right? I think if you manage to do that, um, you'll climb ELO much more consistently uh, and, and you won't struggle as much to play champions that are, like, very hard punished. Like, Jace, for example, if you start falling behind, it's really bad. Yeah. All right. Uh, that is my solution. Uh, uh, it's a lot. Too much, but uh, I learned a lot. Uh, again, the VOD is going to be up on Twitch, so if you want to go back to it, of course, you can also DM me and message me if, if there are any questions you want me to ask um, later, you know, you want to check in on me in your next 20 games, see if it helped you. If it didn't help you, uh, I'm always happy to follow up. If it helped you, I'm also happy to follow up. I don't mind giving you advice on, 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 on small things, you know, obviously, maybe not a full VOD review, but like small things like, you know, like, you know, what do you think about this Jace build or uh, I, this, this build isn't working for me? Do you have any suggestions? Stuff like that. I'm super happy to help you with. 
Um, I really enjoyed this. I think you played really well. Honestly, I think your mechanics are really, really good. Like I mentioned, like if you can translate the leads you get, because I'm sure you get leads a lot, to proactive moves that include multiple mm -hmm. people, and you are making proactive moves, knowing what the result is going to be or what you're looking for, I think you're going to have way better results. Because what I'm thinking is like, you go to the right place, but you might not be thinking about you're not decisive in the moment because you haven't thought about what exactly it is that you're trying to get out of the situation and it's that uh decisiveness that's going to like level up your gameplay yeah exactly i mean awesome. yeah, i'm gonna focus a lot on uh on um like thinking behind every action i make and like maybe playing a bit less mechanical champions just to start you know building the habits or maybe like just playing fiora because i have like good instinct on it and like just no i think that's like... really good like uh, again play whatever you're most comfortable on and just when you're playing fiora right like when you're when you're contesting the wave you know like as you're co coming up in lane basically i want you okay i'm gonna open rift kit uh you can check my stream uh, uh this is what i want okay i'm gonna show you exactly what i want as because you're doing I, I this motion like when I'm playing this, i have to focus too much <clears> on like the i get that step. i get that but this is the thing right so what i want is this i want you to before you're in the lane i want you when you're walking up like this i want as i'm drawing this line i want you to be thinking about it I don't care if you're playing Jace, Heimerdinger, Kennen, whatever, but when you get here, you know what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. Okay? Are you watching the stream? Did you see what I just drew? Yeah. So as you're walking, because your champion takes 20 seconds, right? In these 20 seconds, I want you to come to a conclusion, I'm going to play the wave, and you're going to do it multiple times. Oh, you're going to do it again now, because you based three minutes later, and you're going to do it again. Two minutes later, because you based. And sometimes you're going to be here and you're going to have less time because you're TPing. But as you're basing and buying and you're TPing, I want you to think, how am I going to do this wave? What is the result? Like, what am I trying to accomplish mm -hmm. with my wave? Right? Am I crashing it to then move down? Am I letting him push it in and then I freeze it and then I gank? What is the goal? I want you to come to the conclusion as you're walking here. Same thing. Level one, you come out of base. You have 50 seconds to think about what you want to do with your wave. I hope it's a good idea. <laughs> All right? I mean, it is. Good. I, I mean, like, I hope you come up with a good idea of what to do with your wave, <laughs> like, in the moment, you know? You have 50 seconds. Longer than that, you have, like, a minute and 30, you know? Like, you have a minute and 30 to think about how you're going to manage your first three waves. I hope it's going to be good. Uh, but later in the game, you come out of base. You base, you buy your Cyrildos or your Monomune. You walk out of lane, start looking around, right? Like, you, the best habit, and this is what everyone will tell you, the best habit... You can have as a top laner is to do this as any laner by the way is to do this all right i'm drawing to the pixel bush you just walk out of base from mid into the pixel and whilst you're walking you think about where you want to go if you want to go top side you walk to the pixel i want to go top you go through here you drop vision you hover for mid wave and then you go top and you do the same bot side and as you're walking here when you reach the pixel you come to your conclusion and when you get here, I want you to have made a plan for this wave, the one that's here, and the wave that's coming out of Nexus. Okay. Okay? And that's it. Every single time you come out of base, I want you to make a plan for the wave that's here, here, and here, and the wave that's coming here, here, and here. And if you manage to do this, you will be one step ahead of everyone else, and you will be probably considered better than everyone else. <laughs> because if you're one step ahead in your strategy game, that is usually a good thing. So if you know what is going to happen on these waves, and you know what's going to happen on the next waves, you can fully focus on your mechanics, regardless of how easy or hard your champion is, because you have a plan already set up, right? All right? Yeah. Awesome. This is the next step for me. And hopefully I can like uh, be more consistent in the solo queue ranking. Yeah, that's going to help you. Awesome. I appreciate that. All right, man. I'm going to leave it, leave it at that for now. I have one more person that uh, has coaching with me today, straight after this. I think I went uh, a little late, so I'm going to ask him if it's still okay, if it still works for him, because uh, this went, went on longer than I expected. Like I mentioned, um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure how long this is going to take, but I really want to be in-depth with this because it does cost a lot of money, so I appreciate that. Thank you very much for joining me. I had a really good time, and uh, I wish you the best of luck in your session because I'm assuming you're going to start playing some solo queue now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, All right, man. it was very interesting. Thank you very much, and uh, yeah, I'm going to work on it. It was... I had a good time as well. Not talking too much, but a uh, lot of information. And uh, yeah, I'm going to focus on this right now. Thank you. Trade away. I appreciate that. Thank you, games. Maybe see you soon. Awesome, man. Take care. You too. All right. Someone mentioned uh, that's just objectively wrong. I'm curious what you're talking about. Did I say something that was objectively wrong?
Does he stream? I believe so, yeah. I believe Jason streams, yes. Uh, time in your... Oh, never mind. It's a uh, next hour, so I have an hour right now. Oh, never mind. Or it's scheduled for the next hour. Perfect. All right. Will I add something for points? Not right now. Pinks should be free. I don't think so. He's talking about Sorolos versus Yomus. Oh. Yes, my mother language is indeed Dutch. Will I coach JDC? I will coach anyone. Is my sleep schedule a bit fucked? Yes, and I made the most out of it. And now I'm coaching people in Europe. Yay! I won't be doing any free coaching, okay, guys? Um, I know it's expensive, and I know it's... I, I get it, but the point is, I value my time a lot, and for me... Um, I think I can contribute a lot to anyone, uh, hopefully, and the more I do this, the more people will see. If you don't have the money, I will keep the VODs free for now. Uh, obviously, maybe in the future I'll ask you to sub to, to get to the content if I have a really large library of like 20, 30 VODs. But for now, it's going to be free, so if you can't afford it, try to learn from what I'm telling you. Uh, if you're a high MR player, all of the things I'm telling him is what, at the end of the day, is what I'm going to try and work with you as well, is... This little thing where you make a decision, when you're here, you start thinking, and when you're here, you end with what you want to do, is true for every single role, every single player. And thinking about this wave and the one that comes out of Nexus, same thing here, this wave and this wave, they're going to come at five minutes. Okay, so, okay, not at five minutes, at zero five and zero, zero five. Okay, so, sorry, like the zero doesn't make sense. My drawing sucks, okay, but at zero five, Okay, so forgive my drawing, okay? I'm terrible at drawing. At 0, 05 on the clock and at 35 on the clock, a minion wave will spawn without fail. This is a League of Legends fact. Okay, so every single time the clock hits 0, 05 past minute, past when they start spawning, okay? Just, okay, yeah, you want to be semantic, they start spawning at 1, 0, 05. After that, at 1, 35, 2, 0, 05, 2, 35, 3, 0, 05. 335 and all the way until the end of the game one minion wave will spawn until the very end and my point is if you know what to do with the wave that's right there and the wave that spawns at 05 or 35 you will be one wave ahead now obviously if you're someone that can think four waves ahead that's even better but start here You never even thought about that? Yes, that is what I'm here for. It's $300, so it's pretty expensive. Uh, the goal of the session is, I didn't do it as much with him, but the goal of the session is you tell me a champion you want to make work, and I help you go through my process of how to make a champion work that you, uh, as a pro player. So the process I go through in order to um, go from, I've never played this champ, or I'm very not that good at this champ, to I'm playing it in LEC in the next two weeks, or like I'm playing it next month in LEC. For an hour, it's uh, I, I would average minimum two and a half hours, uh, two to two and a half hours minimum, maximum up to three and a half hours, I would say. So this session was really long, it was three and a half hours, but that's because it was a very complicated champion. Jace is hard, has a lot of small things that need to be improved on. Um, again, my point is, is very much that like after you do the session with me and you play 20 games, that you are adept at the champion, okay? Don't get me wrong, you're still going to have to put in the games. I can't make you good at the champion if you're not comfortable with the mechanics and you're going to have to grind the champion. There's nothing I can do to help you speed that up. I can help you speed it up, sorry, but there's nothing I can do to make you magically have mechanics on a champion, okay? You have to go and practice tool and practice it. There's no other way to do it. Um, and again, I'm I'm holding your hand through the whole process, through the process of uh, reviewing, like like I did this game, right? I, I, I reviewed the, the build, the stats. Again, he has already played a lot of J, so I didn't go in depth, but I would tell you in depth why I think what items are better, etc. I didn't spend much time on, on this with him because most high players have their opinion already made and for me to break down his opinion, etc., etc., and make him do something that he might not agree with, that's not what I'm interested in here to do. 
Uh, but if you don't have an opinion, I will help you understand why I think the build is best, what runes are best, what I think you should run and why. I will go through everything. There's more, like, I, I wrote this all down, but the whole point is, is I will break down a champion for you, basically, and what I think you should be doing, how you should be doing it, uh, etc., etc. So I have another coaching session um, in an hour. Um, I have a Discord now, so I'm going to go ahead and go on my Discord and I'm going to read some of the questions people ask because I have a little question tab. I was answering them in, in chat yesterday, but uh, this is what it's here for. Very nice. All right, so I'm just going to read off these questions here off my other monitor. Uh, am I still going with the smaller, more refined champ pool for pro player? You're going to keep some of the off-meta picks. If I do go back to pro, I will always... Um, it will determine on what role I play, but ultimately I think having a smaller champion pool is better. Will I be doing more coaching on stream? Yes, I will. That is the plan. Would I be willing to play any role if I went back to pro? I love doing jungle in 2021. Yes. I just want to clarify. I'll just put the questions like this. Um, yeah, I do want to. Go, uh, I do want to go back to playing pro. Um, personally, it's something that I really enjoy. Like playing, being a part of a team is what I really enjoy, and competing is what I really enjoy. And I think I can contribute a lot to any team, regardless of what role I play. Uh, even to the point where I'm considering going into coaching, because like I said, I, I think I can really help people connect and align on what the game should be done. I, I really learned a lot over my years and how to get a team to work together. And um, I'm happy to explore that uh, as well if I can't be a pro player, but really just being a part of a team infrastructure and, 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 and professional League of Legends is what I really value. Uh, so yes, any role will do. Uh, except support because I like dealing damage and I don't know, I, I just, I don't think I can play, I, I don't think I can grind support enough basically. Like I really don't think I can play it enough support games in solo queue to get really good at it. Uh, so yeah. Do I have a streaming schedule? Right now it's just random. I will schedule coaching sessions with people and that's when I will go live. So um, maybe in the future when I have something consistent set up, that's going to change. But that's going to be it. For now, a lot of, at this point, a lot of players on insane amount of concepts about the game, both in macro and macro. How did you learn those and continue learning? Um, well, first thing is obviously studying better players than you is the first step to learning. And then breaking down their thought process, right? So... Um, understanding why Zeus does what he does in order to put himself in a winning situation helps you um, understanding the concept behind it, right? So uh, wave management, like the way he manages his wave, like he wants to control the wave, right? Why does he want to control the wave? Why does he never want to let enemy Gwen, uh, if you remember the VOD I reviewed, right? Um, why does he never want Gwen to have the slow push, right? The concept behind that is because it makes him vulnerable. It makes him vulnerable to getting tower dove and it makes it impossible for him to proactively uh, make any gold advantages happen. So that's why he does that. So that's just something that you can think about, right? So uh, same thing with Renekton against Renekton. Like he always contested the slow push, always contest the wave, always, always, always. So it's just something to think about uh, basically. And then how do you evolve on these concepts as well? You just, you spend time theory crafting, right? So after you understand the concepts of the game and you understand what you want to accomplish, you start theory crafting. All right. Rogue Wibble in summer. I think that's very unlikely. But I will definitely consider Golden Guardians. Also very unlikely, I think. But I'll consider it. Am I Brazilian? I'm half Brazilian. My mother is uh, born and raised in Brazil. Moved to Belgium to um, get married to my father. And that's where she had me and my brother. So I'm half. However, in terms of culture, I have been very, very lazy with learning. Like, I, I forgot. I lost the ability to speak Portuguese because I was just playing video games all day, every day, and I was just speaking English and Dutch exclusively. And like, I, I was too lazy to speak Portuguese back to my mother because she would always speak in Portuguese, still does, speaks Portuguese to me. And I understand the language um, pretty much natively, you know, um, but I don't speak it because I literally just got too lazy. I just kept playing video games. Big fan of his player personalities. Wanted to show off my favorite all builds at the moment. Give great results. Wanted to hear your thoughts on it. If you want to try it, let me know. Core is Revenant's high energy radiant virtue guard with stone plate with Star Axe or whatever else. Yeah, no, I think it's great. Um, reasoning why it's so good. Yep, pretty much. Um, I already mentioned this when I was playing all off on stream. Um, so I already mentioned this a lot. I think radiant virtue is underrated on all off, and uh, when it was a meta um, item, I think radiant virtue all off when all the all offs were building uh, Jack Show. I already mentioned that this was underrated. I think it was better for him even when when it was gave him ability haste as well because it gave you basic ability haste. Uh, but it's still really good. 15% max health. 
um, over the healing and then a 10% bonus, I think, when you pop ult is just good. So uh, very good build. I think it's uh, pretty well-rounded. The only thing I would say is it can lack damage if you go stone plate on three. So sometimes I think you should pivot into uh, Gargoyle. Uh, sorry, not Gargoyle. You should pivot into Starax on three instead of stone plate against champions where more damage will be more valuable. So champions that that would be like is like Zaya, for example. It doesn't matter how tanky you are, but at some point you have to kill her um, because otherwise she's going to kill you. Either way, I think it is a good build and uh, it's good. It's nice to see creativity in builds. Big fan of you for a long time. I've learned a lot from you. Hope continue ch you I hope you continue chasing your dreams and goals. My question, why is it so hard to carry as a top laner? How can you carry uh, when your team is behind with your head? I'm D4, D3, but struggle to climb with my team feeding. Mainly bot since it's bot meta. Well, the first thing is, is maybe you can influence before the feeding becomes like too much. Maybe you should be leaving your lane and actually going out of your way to influence that, right? So, for example, what you see a lot of high elo players do is when they notice they start losing lane is they'll just base and run bot with champions like Malphite, Rumble. Um, yeah, those are the ones that really do it a lot. But why can't Camille run bot lane and ult the enemy AD carry before he gets too fed? You drop two plates, two waves. It doesn't matter if you already solo killed him three times. You're still going to shit on him. Right? Think about that. Um, a lot of people are scared of making really big exchanges. Like, think about it like as an investment, right? Like, a lot of people are scared of making really large investments, right? So, um, most of your, like, the majority of your advantage. So, investing the majority of your advantage into a big play bot lane. So, let's say you have a 1,000 gold advantage and you give the enemy top lane an opportunity to swing back 600 of that. That's a really big swing, right? That's from going from 1k up to giving him 600 gold. But for that 600 gold that he gets back, I kill his strongest member on the map. So, I go bot and kill his strongest member. Think about it. That's all. I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying it's bad. Some games it will be the way you win. Some games it will be the way you lose. The point is, is having the ability to detach yourself from your own resources and think about it. Like, think about it as if you're playing StarCraft, right? Like, uh, just any real-time strategy game. If you know the enemy team has an atomic bomb building in the bot lane, right? It's a, it's a nuke and it's going to send, it's going to fly straight into your nexus and nuke your whole game, Right? Maybe you should stop worrying about your own resources of that little, get your strongest guy in the top lane. And maybe you should just go there and go take apart his, like pull apart his nuke, you know? Maybe that's more relevant than creating a bigger and bigger advantage in a place where you already have a big enough advantage to win. And even if you give back some of that advantage, like I mentioned, the 600 gold advantage, maybe you can do that. And and this is not for conflict champs. This is champs like Gwen, for Camille, for like, why can't Camille do that? Run bot and gank. Why can't Fiora just pop... Uh, just show up and tower dive into your bot lane on a wave or just gank them. Why can't... Like, the thing is, people are like... You can literally show up on Vision, show yourself on Vision, crash the wave, and then tell them, you are now no longer farming because we are 4v5. Or not even. Like, 3v5 maybe. Or 3v4. Or 2v3. Right? Because the thing is, you're fed. So you might have your mythic. I've done this many times. I just show a bot lane and I just tell them, look, I don't give a fuck. Enemy top laner is playing Sion. I'm playing Jace. Uh, he can go take my plates. I'm I'm waiting in this little tri brush right here. So what I would do is I would push top here. Let's say we take the top tier one, right? And this guy starts freezing top, right? This is the perfect example. I would base and I would just walk like this. Uh, actually, uh, I, I had a better path. So I, I went top. I took the tier two. It's down. We crashed the wave. This guy slow pushes or freezes. And I say, all right, have fun. I'm doing the path like I mentioned. I'm here. And then I will literally just take the control, take the vision. I'll just wait here. And even if my bot lane is 0-2, uh, I have a little Tristana or a little Jinx or a little whatever against the Nephilios, let's say, and he's he's one or two kills up. Uh, what is this guy doing? Uh, he's sitting here and waiting. Because my support my and my jungler are here with me. The AD carry is hitting, but 3v3, they have no chance because I'm a top laner. and the, like, I'm a top laner, right? And they're an AD carry. Bot lane. So I'm up two levels. Naturally, that's what happens. So, yeah, Sion's taking three plates, but we're taking three plates. And Sion getting plus 700 gold. I don't give a fuck. But this guy is getting plus zero. I'm getting plus zero. And my AD carry is getting plus 560 or something, right? Or plus 700 if he gets the full wave by himself. And the point is, is if you equalize the mass, so you equalize the game, and you enter a state where... Instead of having enemy me being up plus 2,000 and enemy AD being up plus 2,000. So let's say, right, I'm up plus 2,000 and enemy AD is up plus 2,000. What I'm doing is I'm saying I go down minus 700 and he goes down minus 700 
And this game is a lot more manageable for me. That 1300 gold difference, that BF sword difference, is a difference I can fight against. This 2000 gold difference is critical mass. I can't fight. This, this is a full item up against my AD carry. He does way too much damage. I cannot outperform that. That is the, the logic behind that play. It is a very simple play that people are scared of because it's a big investment. It might not be, it might, it might be more. It might be, I might be taking, losing a thousand gold of my 2000 gold advantage. It might be 80% of my advantage. I'm a thousand gold up, right? I'm plus 1k and I go down minus 800 to put this guy down 600 gold. He goes to minus 600. I lose more than the enemy team loses. That might also be the case. But the point is, is the first thing is, the first thing you need to understand is the first thing it allows you to influence the game. Let's say the enemy AD carry doesn't realize this is happening and he sits underneath his tower with his support and you four-man tower dive him. His game is fucking boom. He went from going to 1v9 his game no matter what to, oh fuck, I died to the enemy top laner and the enemy AD is taking plates. Meanwhile, because I would just go here, dive this guy, and I would base and go back top. And then, yeah, I'm minus 700, but I killed the enemy AD carry and that's good enough. Okay, there's another version of this. Great. Draw arrows. Sure, draw lines. You get the point, right? Like, it's really that simple, guys. That's really smart because the levels you get from top also have gold value. So those two levels are worth 1,000 gold. Yes, you are super advantaged in the fight. 100% of times. That's the thing. As a top laner, if you... Let me drag you here. As a top laner, you do this, right? And you, you 3v3 here... So this is the enemy team defending, right? And your mid is like hovering like this, enemy mid is hovering like this, your jungler is here with you, your support is here, and your enemy, your AD is here or here, right? Either he's hitting the plates from up here or hitting it from down here, like hovering towards you. My point is, is like, obviously, if the enemy team plays perfectly, they have the positional advantage and the fight will be better for them. But the amount of times where the jungler will not know how to play this exactly right, and he will do something like this, and then you snap his neck, or you snap the support's neck, or you snap AD's neck because he's doing this actually in reality, and they're defending like this, for example, I, the point is, is you are influencing the game. You are making a play that is in your favor, percentage-wise, because you're outnumbering the enemy team. If you can count, there are one, two, three, four, five blue balls, and there are one, two, three, and then f a little bit further, four red balls. Or it's more like orange into my eyes. Maybe I'm getting colorblind, but it's like a dark orange. Anyway, you are creating a play in your advantage, and you are creating a scenario where you are influencing the game. If you just go here and you go, like I mentioned, you go from being up a thousand gold and then you go up 1500 gold. Not every champion can carry the game with going up and up and up in number, right? Because 80 carries, the way their items work, it's actually harder to draw arrows with this one. The way AD carry items work is, okay, and this is this is this is just maths, okay? The way AD carries work is the first plus 3200 is worth less gold than the next plus 3200, okay? So the first item they buy is less gold efficient than the next item they buy because every item they buy gets better and better with more crit and attack speed and AD they buy. This is how crit and attack speed and AD scale. So the neck, the third 3200 will give him even more damage than the last 3200. Whereas most top laners don't have that. Or if they do, but it's less impactful. Divine Sunder is a great example of this. So DS, Divine Sunder or Triforce. Why does Triforce always have better, almost always, have better results in solo queue? It's because Triforce works this way. It works like an AD carry item. After getting Triforce, the next 3,300 gold you get will be more valuable because attack speed makes it scale better. Divine Sonar has none of that. It has no attack speed. So it doesn't scale that. So it means that it's a really strong purchase when you get it, and then it doesn't scale with any other item anymore. It scales a little bit now because they, gave, they, have, they, they have it give AD now. But that's about it. Yes. So that's why when you're playing top versus AD, if you don't take the onus to get your ass out of your lane and go stop this from happening, you are playing bad. Because you know this. You know that their gold is more valuable than yours.
for every 3,000 gold you get and he gets, his gold is more valuable than yours because his build scales better. Same with AD carries, same with mages. Mages are the same. Death cap. This is death. This is why death cap is such a strong item because death cap unlocks this for mages. Because once you get death cap, every AP item you get got before death cap and after get death cap is better than if you don't have a death cap, right? If I buy Ludens when I have a death cap, Ludens gives me how much AP? Let's do the math because again, I want to make sure I drive this home. Okay, for everyone here, death cap. How much percent is death cap? I know Ludens is 80 AP, right? It's 80 AP. Death cap increases that by 35%. Let's open a calculator. It's simple maths, but why not? Death cap is 80 divided by 100 times 35. If I'm not mistaken, this is correct math. So in other words, 28 AP. How much is 28 AP? 28 AP is like three-fourths of a blasting wand. What is a blasting wand in terms of gold? Blasting wand is 850 gold. So my Luden's Echo purchase just got 35% more lucrative because I have a death cap. This is why death cap is a large spike and same with infinity edge and the Vori quick blades these items make it even better right bruisers don't have this item they don't have this capability so what does, what are their items all their items are just straight up stat sticks uh sterax has a tendency to work this way but it doesn't really work that way um it has a tendency is what i mean is like it, it scales with maximum health but the thing is, is um you also need resistances to make use of this maximum health. So it's a, a bit of both. But the point is, is Sterax is the closest. Uh, Maw, Death Dance, Sterax, Gargoyle, Stoneplate as a resistance item. Gwen? Gwen is an AP champion, so yeah, she builds Death Cap. It's not about type of champion, okay? It's type of items you buy. If I can buy Death Cap on Gang... Like, Gangplank is an example of a carry top layer that actually does manage to scale as well as the enemy carry because he buys the same items as they do. Strax Gargoyle combo is nice. That's true. It's a very good combo. What about Heartsteel? Heartsteel, if you're a champion that scales health into damage, then you can, you can consider this to be an item that scales. Um, but the thing is, generally speaking, health scales only with resistances. And because of the way percent penetration works in League of Legends... It's not that good. Because percent penetration means the more resistances you have, the less valuable, like the more value this item gets them. Same with health. The more health you have, the more this gets valuable. This is why, by the way, it's AD carry meta because you can't just pick a super tank and be unkillable because they can buy this item and they will kill you really fast because if you are 2,000 gold ahead, you are 2,500 health, health bigger, right? So you're playing Scion or Cho'Gath are the most common examples. But even if you're playing a normal tank like Maokai and you're having a great game and you're really fed and you have a ton of health, uh, they buy Lord Dominic's regards and they will cut you down like the tree you are. Camille with Triforce plus Starax? Yes, but does Camille buy Triforce? And nowadays, no, she doesn't, because Camille is in a situation where she relies on Divine Sunderer to start scaling. And um, again, she doesn't buy any scaling items, really. No, she just buys uh, Divine Sunderer thingy. See, Triforce winner is higher, not because it's the better item, but because it scales with every item. And in solo queue, there's always a tendency for the game to go late game. Always. You will almost always get to three items uh, playing solo queue. I mean, not almost always, but like very commonly, three, four items will occur in your solo queue games. Uh, if you're playing well, at least, you're going to get to that point. If you're get, if you're feeding, you're going to have two items and never get to three, but that's just something I wanted to point out. Oh, okay. Let me talk to the person. Uh, the person that got coaching actually wants it to be off stream, so I might... Uh, I might have to... I mean, uh, I'll, I'll talk to him and see, but um, it might, be, might just be the initial coaching session for today, because, again, that's absolutely fine. I think it makes more sense. Um, like I said, it's going to be available for other people. If you want to get coached on stream or you want to get coached off stream, it's completely up to you. I don't want to put people in positions where they're uncomfortable. Again, they're paying a lot of money to get um, to get this coaching. So I really want to make sure that they personally get to choose if that's on stream or off stream. And um, I think it makes a lot more sense for me to do it off stream with him if that's what he prefers. Um, I know it sucks for you guys that wanted to watch, but like I said, it's going to hopefully be something I do regularly. Um, and uh, there's going to be plenty of footage out there anyway. No, I coach every role. Um, I wrote it down. Again, this is going to be a very intensive session of three hours where I give you a bomb load of information. The plan is to record a VOD 
um, and write down some of the things and then obviously give you access to talking to me um, so that if you want to follow up after you've played some games and you want some extra advice, maybe it's going well and you just want to mention that. Maybe it's going bad and you want some extra advice. That's also going to be available. Uh, I'm not going to be your best friend and message you every day and check up on you and ask you how your sleep went and, you know, say good morning. But I will be available as a contact on your Discord and you will be able to leave a message in the Discord chat that we have. So, um, yeah, <laughs> just clarifying, okay? It is expensive, I get that, but I don't think anyone is offering a... Basically, I hold your hand through learning an entire champion start to finish. And that's what I'm offering. Um, how I will learn how to play a champion, as if I were to prepare it for LEC or LCS, and I go through that entire process with you. And then it's on you to play enough games of it to get good at it. But I will set you up so that you have all the knowledge you need in order to have... First of all, the right idea of how to how to execute on mechanics, the right idea in terms of decision making, and then the correct or at least closest to optimal cookie cutter builds that you can use. Uh, and again, you can optimize depending on how hard you try. If you're a lower elo player that prefers to have one simple cookie cutter build and you rely on that, that's fine. If you want the full layout of you know every item in every situation, or not in every, but in most situations, which items I think you should be paying attention to for your champion, I'm happy to do that for you too. And then ultimately, depending on the, the, the champion you ask for, uh, like Jace, for example, is a hard champion. So I have to go through a lot of his, his mechanics. I have to mention a lot of small details because small details define the difference between a good and a great Jace player or even a uh, good and a bad Jace player, right? So that champion is very complicated. It takes a lot of practice. Uh, it's not easy. And um, it's really noticeable if your spacing is bad on Jace. It's not so noticeable when you play like Annie or... Um, other champions, that, like especially if you play really long-range champions that are um, very safe, right? So, for example, if you play Zerath, then you don't have to space very well because you can just overcompensate and take too much space. Uh, sorry, like, take too little space, and it's fine because you have so much range anyway, right? Seraphine is another great example of this, um, where Seraphine bot lane is far easier to play because the range is far longer. So when you don't take enough space or you take too much space, it's, like, the only mistake you can make is get too close. Uh... If you stay far enough away, often it's going to be fine. It's also just supply and demand. It's not even about that. I don't know what the supply and demand is. I just set this price because, like I said, I think I have a unique service. And um, um, I'm estimating two and a half to three hours of work with you. Um, I'm very passionate about this, so I love doing it. But ultimately, I realized not asking money for it is just being stupid. <laughs> uh, you know? Why do something for free when you can ask money for it? And again, if the demand is zero, then it will be a matter of no supply and demand. But yes, you're right. It is. I shouldn't say it's not supply and demand. It is a small part of it. But the majority of it is I'm passionate about it. I love doing it. And this way I get to focus on what I love about the game, which is exploring champions. At the end of the day, I fell in love playing League of Legends because I explore champions. Uh, you know, when I was a noob, uh, this is the first champion I saw, okay? So I don't know. I'll show you guys a clip of, of, of Season 2 Gragas. I'm going to show you a clip, okay? I, I, and, and this is just hilarious, okay? It can be any clip, guys. Any clip, okay? Just to show you guys, just to give you guys context of what made me play League of Legends. And it might be cringe, but this right here, okay? I'm not even joking. This! I saw this ult and I was like, whoa, this ult looks sick. This guy just fucking bought He just like bursted their whole team. Holy shit. I need to play that champion. And I started playing Gragas, or I wanted to. I, I logged into League of Legends, my brother was, was playing, and I was watching him play. And I saw this ult, and I was like, holy fuck, that looks insane. This guy just, like, exploded on, like, he just exploded the screen and, like, one-shot people. Like, that's crazy. I need to play Gragas. So I went ahead, and um, I started playing League. Actually, it was, this map is too old. It's actually on, 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 not on this map. This map, this map is too old. Uh, let me see, is there, is there one with... It was this map I played on, I think. Yeah, it's this map. This this is the one I played on. It's this ult. Wait, where is this ult? I need to see the ult. There, this. Like, I saw this. This is what I saw. This. Like, this is huge explosion. I was like, holy fuck, this champ looks cracked. I have to play that. And he also looked ridiculous, you know? Like, fucking Gragas. What a dumbass looking champion. If you think about it, you know, he's a fat man with a barrel. Hilarious. So, um, that's what got me into League. And then when I started playing the game, 
uh, I fell in love with just trying shit. You know, I went ahead and, and I tried everything. Um, I can't show you this anymore because um, for some reason it doesn't show up anymore. I transferred my account and I lost all my stuff here. It says that, like my history, my rank history. Because this is account, um, this is my my account that I started playing on. It doesn't even want to load, but um, in season three, I literally had a huge list. I don't know if someone can if someone can bring this up. But in season three, like I have fifteen hundred games here, fifteen hundred games. Uh, and I played literally, you, you could scroll down, I think I had uh, at least one game on every single champion that was released at the time. <laughs> in, in ranked, if not like, like, literally like 5 to 20. Like, literally, I spammed every champ at some point. And, um, that's what I loved about the game. Season 4 is when I also OTP'd. Season 3, I was not quite yet. Season 4 and season, season 4 is when I OTP'd him, or season 5 maybe I OTP'd him. Um, anyway... Yeah, there's no results, but the seasons are here because that's how it worked. Anyway. Go to Fnatic Bipo on EU West. I don't think I don't think that account is I I I'm pretty sure. I mean, this is not like This is this is not like, this account is this is not my original original account. It does have stats on it. Uh but this is this was my Smurf account. Actually, no, wait, is this my old account? Oh shit. Wait. This is me. Never mind. I'm trolling. What happened? Why does it say season? Th Why does it end here? What? Oh, more season tier. Oh, here we go. It is me. Yay! Oh, there you go. Well, nice. Here you go. This is me. Okay. So it was this, but in season three, and it was the list was longer. But you see what I mean, right? Like I was a demon. You know, I was a demon. I would play whatever the fuck I wanted, and I would spam it, and I would be shit at it, or I would be good at it. You know, I was a little demon, a little demon on the Renekton, a little demon on the Olaf. Ah, uh, look at look at this, you know, this is still three or four games per champ, by the way. Like, look at what a little demon I was. I was a dirty, dirty demon, but my Braum was too clean, by the way. I couldn't lose when I played Braum, I remember that. My Lucian also, it was very clean. Wait, where's Graves? Where's Graves? I remember I used to play Graves. Wait, where's Graves? I need to find Graves. Here he is, old Graves, Smoge. I used to spam that shit. Wait, where is it? Uh, here, number. There we go. Anyway, this is when I got picked up, by the way. This is top lane, right? So this is when I was playing casually. I wasn't actually playing that much, but this was the top meta. And this is when I got picked up for an amateur team. So the people wondering, why are you a top laner? This is why. Because I had a really high win rate. Because I played very little. So the games I played, I was super focused. And I, um, I would win almost every game. This is also the strategy I employed when I got, um, when I got hired by Fnatic to be their sub is play very little, focus on quality over quantity, and uh, really, like, grind the nitty-gritty. So that's why you see some really high win rates here. Because um, in terms of volume, if you look at the difference, it's actually a really big difference. I played way more here. Like, look, it might look like I played less, but I played way more different champions, way bigger pool. And I've always been this way. It's like, if I, if I focus on a smaller pool, because look, you see how this is, like, instantly falls off to, like, one win, one loss, and then one win. Uh, and here it's like a couple. I, I still played a lot. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying like I, I really focused on quality over quantity. I don't think my Fiora was ever good, so I don't know what this is doing. How many games? I would play three to four games a day, uh, maybe five. OTP GP. I was never in one trick GP. No, anyone that thought that is wrong. The only champion I would say I one tricked was Yasuo, and even that, like you can see, right? I still played a lot of other champs, but I would say I played a lot more Yasuo. Then I played anything else, and that's the only champion I ever played where I played a lot more of one champ than everything else. This game I played, like, I played more Darius than I played Gangplank. Anyone that told you that I was a GPOTP is wrong. Also, someone said that I was a Garen one trick. I was never a fucking Garen one trick. What the fuck? I never played this champ, ever. Like, literally, this is the history, bro. Where do you see Garen? No Garen to be detected. Um, I played a lot of GP, yes, but like, it's not like I played him so much more than anything. And then here, I played a lot of Jason Victor. Um, which came in handy in Season 8, right? But uh, I was a big Jace, Victor, GP player. Always have been. See, Victor, Jace. They were some of my most played champions. This is when I hit rank 1 the first time, Season 7. Uh, I was spamming Jace to get there. But again, you see the volume of games gets lower and lower because I started realizing, for me, what worked to climb was uh, quantity. Uh, no, not quantity, it was quality. So yeah, still Gangplank there. Still Victor, Jace. Um, and then here I got picked up and I... This is where I went back to qu quantity because... Um, as a pro player, I, I think this is what I was asked of, to do. Was I playing a lot of Virgot? Of course I was, but that's on my Korean account. 
um, in um, in Korean Challenger, which is gone now. So uh, this does not. This is this is up until the, this amount of games. By the way, this is until the end of summer split. I have like 800 more games on my Korean account. <laughs> Um, maybe not 800. I think it might have been 800, actually. It might have been 800. But yeah, I had, like, um, at least, I think, 600 games uh, over in Korea, uh, obviously, when Worlds happened. Um, and I played... That That account was Aatrox, Urgot, Swain, Victor. And it was, like, Aatrox, Urgot, like, like 80, 80, 90 games of Aatrox and, like, 60, 70 games of Urgot or something. And then, like... 30 games of Victor and Swain, and that was it. I just two-tricked those champions. I exclusively played those two champions, and I was really good at them. One of my biggest regrets is that um, Season 8, I didn't get to play uh, Aatrox at Worlds, because I, I was I, I was very confident my Aatrox was the best in our team. Um, but yeah. And then uh, Season 9, I played 90 games of Rengar in a month, and then I played it on stage. <laughs> 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 Fucking 90 games of Rengar. What a psycho I am. Also, I was really stupid and I played Pantheon. You know, Pantheon was disabled this whole year. So me playing 50 games of Pantheon was not very relevant. <laughs> they reworked Aatrox Season 8. So end of summer, they reworked him. Um, so you see, I still got a lot of games of him because uh, he was already reworked halfway through the year. JCD carry, can it work? I wouldn't recommend it, but it can work, yeah. Anyway, enough about nostalgia. I'm going to close the stream and finish up with the coaching session I have scheduled. Pantheon was disabled because he got reworked. Uh, this was, uh, this was, uh, FPX Worlds, right? Pantheon was just... Oh, he wasn't disabled for Worlds, he was permabanned. Okay, he was disabled for playoffs, but I still played him. And then for Worlds, he was permabanned, but I played him because I loved him. But he was at a point where it was, like, unanimously agreed that if Pantheon is in the game, he's so broken, you just win. This is when he would one-shot minion waves. He would one-shot minion waves the Q at level 9. With, like, any amount of AD, he would one-shot minion waves. He would block tower shots... And, like, what else do you need to know, you know? <laughs> like, he's a fucking AD champion that has instant wave clear <laughs> that can block tower shots. <laughs> <laughs> he was so broken. <laughs> you coach jungle? I, co I coach all roles, yes. Anyway, yeah, this is me. You see, like, I've always been a bit of a demon with all these champs, which is why I feel confident that I can help people uh, regardless of what you want to play, what role you want to play it. I have... I have played everything, my friends. I have been everywhere. I've explored every role, at least to a certain extent. You know, in case you're wondering, there's a little bit of Nami, some Zillion, some Karma. Uh, it's here too, you know. Um, for the people that are interested in getting coaching on those, uh, I have some experience, of course, uh, playing that too. Like, I, I even remember I played um, I played these Enchanter supports in solo queue, so I'm here, Lulu. I was playing Lulu top a lot. <laughs> well, seven games of Lulu was a lot by my standards, okay? I mean, for anyone's standards, I think. And, um, yeah. Kiana? I can coach Kiana, but I can't play her. Uh, I can't tell you what Kiana's supposed to do, though. I've watched, actually, for whatever reason, I have watched a lot of Beifeng. I don't know why. But I have watched so many VODs of this guy that I have a very good idea of what a really good Kiana looks like. Ezreal? Any champion. I have a very good idea of what good Ezreal looks like. If you think uh, some of the names that I've played against and, and played with, you know, in solo queue and against, if you think Deft is good at Ezreal, if you think Viper is good at Ezreal, if you think... Um, I don't think Gumayushi I played very much, but uh, Jackie Love, um, you know? You know, if you think... I can set up this kind of play because I don't know what Ezreal does, then you tell me, you know? You know, the thing is, he fucking griefed, okay? Like, I had him. Look, I have him, but he is into me. Like, little psychopath. Look, so he's gonna path into me, right? I know it. Look, I put my W right now. Right now. He is the same second at W. Because he knows he's gonna step into it. And I'm gonna flash flip him. But this fucking psychopath is into me. And I'm like, what the fuck? But my point is, okay, normal Ezreal player gets killed there anyway. Because I know he's stepping into, into my goo. I know he's gonna path in and try to cue the people here. I know for a fact he's looking for it. He eat in, which is like, I mean, 
I don't know what the fuck he's smoking, but like, all right, bro. Sure, you know. I agree, that guy's insane, but my point is like, that guy's, like, I'm not doubting that that guy's insane, but the point I'm trying to make here is, I can help you understand how to play Ezreal at a level that, um, I understand champion Ezreal at a level that I can go into a uh, quarterfinals match at Worlds and read the mind of a literal world, world class AD carry player on Ezreal. That's all I'm saying, okay? I'm not saying that he's better than anyone else. I'm just, I know the thought process that goes behind the champion and I can find angles on this champion, which means I know how the champion works and what the champion's trying to achieve. Uh, him eing in was complete cycle play, but even if he just pass into my goo there, I will almost always flash flip him and fuck him there. Always. You saw that because I cast W the same frame he eed, and that's because that's he should be walking up and queuing instead of eing. Um, but yeah, just do it. He's insane, but he's also clinically insane. <laughs> anyway. Awesome. Wasn't my flash down? It might have been, but my Rakan would have killed him instead then. I can double check. Why not? Mm -mm. Any tips on Clud? Ah, uh, hit Q. That's my best tip. Yeah, my flush is down. That's true. But Marakan has flush, so Marakan will get him for me, and I'll then I will flip him. Like right now, if he walks on this goo, he's grounded, and Marakan is. I, and I know Hilly would. I know he would. This is one thing Hilly was. The, IMO. He's world class at. Like if he if you give him the opening, he will take it. I'm also communicating it right. Like look, look, look. Cause right now I'm casting my goo, right? You can also tell Hilly's ready, you know? Boom. His R was a little slower than than I would have liked, but honestly, he was ready, you know? Like he took the he took the angle. But like the thing about Singe is like uh, when you play him, you always communicate your goo, you know? Look, 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 my goo, goo, goo. That's what I would say. Goo, I have goo. And then like people are ready, you know, because they know it's coming. He does a little I don't know what he does, but it's like a I don't know, I always, I always like th think of the stupid sound when I see him use his goo. He's like, he bends over, he's like... <laughs> I don't know what he does, but he does this weird thing. Anyway. You don't have flash? Yes, but Marakan does, so Marakan will flash W him here. What's the top process here is Ezreal? He's, he wants to kill people, and he thinks he's safe to Ian because he has his whole team around him. Like, he's Orn Leon on top of him. Like, he has a lot of space. It's also, keep in mind, how many champions can he not react? Like, how many champions can stop him going this way? Because the thing is, his mindset is like, worst case, I flash back into my team, right? But look at my, like, if I could zoom in, I would zoom in on this little pool of shit, you know? How many champions put this fucking pool of aids and stop all peel and stop you from traveling into this direction? Because the thing is, if he flashes and he flashes into the goo, he's just as fucked. Like, he's equally fucked. But just to, so you guys appreciate, and this is why I played off-meta champions sometimes. Like, look at this. You know what this, like, look, what can they do? Nothing. The fight is over. One spell is cast. My pool of goo is just fisting their whole front line. Like, they can't play. They have to run away from it. Because the thing is, is they can either run into my goo and then get absolutely murdered by my back line, right? Because I'm just going to flip one of them backwards and the other guy still can't play the game for four seconds because Singed Adhesive is balanced. What is it? Mega Adhesive? Dude, I love when they had, like, these super on-the-nose names for these abilities. I don't know. I just appreciate it. Mega adhesive. It just gets the point across, you know? Nowadays, you have to go like... I don't know, what do we have? I mean, honestly, they still have some vibes. I know Renata has like, um... Renata has like what? Renata has, um... Handshake? That's a good one. Bailout. Hostile Takeover? That one is nice. Loyalty program is what I mean with like... I'm really not sure what that means. Leverage, I like to... Actually, I like the, the way they named her abilities. Anyway. G think coaching already happened. I'm going to end the stream here and I'm going to go coach someone that would prefer it off stream. It's going to be available as a VOD, so feel free to check it out. Appreciate you all joining. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Enjoy watching LEC. Peace out. Lux's old name is dope. True. All right.